system doing magical things. And we've done that for Scott, for Rob, for Joan, for Beck Siri. We've created so much more value together. And that day, I'll make you bet, we'll raise another 100,000. Like in and our I'm, sleep. And, Wait, yeah. and probably more like 200,000. And it could be more. But then we, and, but not just for the year, we create ongoing programs, adopt horses, and people have the right to renew it year to year. We're creating compounding value. And all those people want to meet each other. And all those people want to meet each other and do business and have more things happen. And every one of those people, Rob Gill can offer a complimentary financial uh, session for what I created value for me. Uh, Scott Tennant can create a complimentary discussion about the amazing things that I will stand up in that room and say, save my life. I will say, God, and then the Dr. Tennant and Scott save my life. Why wouldn't everybody want to do it that way? Last but not least, we get to hang out with horses. And we get to hang out with horses, Beck and Siri, and I get to whip Beck's ass at who can hold their breath longer it's under on. the water. It's on, Beck. Let's go. Look out, Sean. Let's go. So, Scott, Scott Tennant, please, brother, first of all, thank you for your generosity. Uh, yeah, thank you for saving my life. That's a real statement. Doctors have said impossible. Adam was there last night with black doctors saying, what? He had an aortic dissection? Couldn't believe it. He didn't have surgery? He didn't, they, wait, what? It healed by itself? Adam had that conversation last night. That's like the 10th of those conversations we've had. So love you, Scott. Scott, what's present for you? First of all, thank you. And Scott, I love you, but I am going to bite your toes off. This is how we make friends. We can say these things. If you just drop it, ah, oh, I just want to do something. Tell me something that you're taking away from this about how we're going to rock it make more happen together, build more magic, compounding value, ecosystem merging, assembly, audience, ideal avatar. Say something, please, my brother, that proves this point from somebody who's been on Tony's stage for, with ideal audience assembled, saving life technology, growing your business, impact for your dad's mission, your vision in the world. Scott, what's present? Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Um, wow. I have so many notes I, I've almost filled up a whole pad. Um, thank you so much for, for gathering all this. This is absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, so, so many ideas. And um, yeah, I'm ready just to, you know, completely accelerate. You know, uh, all of these things are things that, uh, you know, has just blown my mind. And, you know, being with all of you incredible people, and, you know, you know, I love you to no end. And, um, you know, Beck and Siri, I have the utmost expect for you. You know, I love you completely. Scott, can I ask you this? Yeah. We love you completely. And can I add, Scott also played a role in my being here today. Mm -hmm. um, his electrical charging plates mm -hmm. that I use every single day in the hospital when I was there for 35 days. Mm -hmm. And my doctors, I do it every single day. day. And my doctors it were truly in awe of what were you, what was I doing differently that every other patient wasn't doing. Yeah. And I only wish that every single human being going through cancer could have access mm -hmm. to the same thing I did. But Scott, thank you. Um, oh, thank huge you. part in saving my life too. Sorry, Sean, but I just want to, you know, say that this man truly is uh, playing CSE. a major role in saving lives. Every word you say, adds massive value. So please don't ever say you're sorry. Please interrupt. Please speak. Please share from your heart. Every word you say is magical and value added. So thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Scott. So Scott, it, let's, let's be, let's all get, because we want to stay real. We want to yep. stay real. We're all in our hearts. We all love each other. But if it came down to it and you had right now two choices in the mission of saving lives, impacting people, doing the things that you did for, for me, the, the things for Siri, would your preference be, right, which is going to cost Beck and Siri a lot more time, um, if you had to choose between the two right now in your mission, your growth, your energy, your contribution, would you prefer a single day at the ranch, which Beck and Siri so graciously offers a visit for you, for Keith, hanging out there, your, your amazing significant other who I love to know and one of the funniest, coolest people you could ever imagine. Um, <laughs> Would you rather like a day just hanging out for the, the day with these beautiful souls or a day with like, you know, 66 people, 50 of which maybe, you know, know very well, that would be people who could afford 
to work with you, uh, partner with you, create more events with you, create ecosystem mergers, which would your choice be? And be straight up real. Because by the way, because you might be like, Sean, I have everything I want. I should have Beck and Siri for the day. Would you rather one-on-one Beck and Siri for the day or all partnering and creating the other kind of day? Your thoughts. And by um, the way, I will make, I will, Chris Crone, I, I promise you, will for that event, Beck and Siri, I will speak on my uh, friend and brother's behalf and partner. He will promote the crud out of it and he will sell, he will, I'll make you this bet, have five people that come just in pure contribution have to pay $5,000 a ticket to come. I guarantee you that Chris will, will cause that easily, cause another 25,000 to five people. And that'll be Chris's contribution to this. I'll speak on his behalf and I love him. Um, so Scott, your choice, what do you choose? Awesome. Um, I would take the 66 people because I know that just being in proximity with Beck and Siri at that event will a thousand percent impact the world in my life. Yeah. Awesome. So, so Beck and Siri, if you wouldn't mind, actually Siri, if you wouldn't mind, what would you be teaching people if you if you talk to 20 people who want to be in plat for life tomorrow and you had to just give them 60 or 90 seconds on this principle of assembling audience partnering ecosystem merging what would the teaching point that you would teach them like what are you coming away with and what would you teach those people from this incredible segment today that when we come together and we're coming together just wanting, I mean, I'm going to put it in my words, yeah. coming together from our hearts um, and giving from our hearts and wanting to, wanting the very best. I mean, this is just speaking from my heart, wanting the very best for every single one of you and knowing that when we come together, the magic we can create. I, I simply, I feel like I'm in a dream and Beck's going to wake me up and say, oh, you overslept and I'll be so upset. But when we come together and, and to go back to the event at the ranch, I would prefer everyone to bring five people because then I feel like, oh my God, everyone, yes. everyone is going to come for this event and everyone is going to receive something extraordinary because it's creating an opportunity where everyone is going to be blessed with a number of different connections. So, but just the power of what can happen when we come together with no expectation, we got on, we just thought we were gonna talk about how amazing Sean is and how amazing the Platts are and how much we love Tony and how he's changed my life. Like that's what I thought I was coming on for. And now like, we're literally gonna feed our herd of 41 for, for a nearly, year. nearly two years now. <laughs> But it's bringing together, and, and Sean, I hope I'm answering your, your question correctly, but it's getting to know one another and understanding, like, what is it that you need to be the best that you can be in what you're doing in your life and the impact that you're having? How can we help you with that? How can we support each other? And how can we truly come together? Because together we are so much more powerful in every single way. And the love I'm feeling here, the support I'm feeling here, I hope that every single person here feels that in, in different moments, being a part of this group, you should, because like, I don't know. I, I just, Sean, I, I just, I'm, I'm you know, so yes, Beck has my wonderful wife. No, that's no. going to put it more succinctly. No, I, I want, I want to say thank you because I, I know so many people on this call too. And since Sean came into our life and we got to have him here at the ranch with his daughter, like from the first time and you all feel the same, same with Scott and, and Adam. And um, I just knew that our life, I'm going to use a quote here, it would never be the same. And it's just, I'm blown away that from this call where we thought we were just getting on to say hi, we are going to feed that herd of 40 horses, all rescue horses, all rescued from slaughter for nearly two years. But like, more this importantly, is, the impact on I humans finished, will be... And we get to have people here at the ranch doing healing with horses. And it's just That's blows nice. my mind. And we get to know you better, which means that we can serve you. How can we give? How can knowing us uh, impact your lives in a positive way? Um, but this, Sean, I thank you. I thank you for bringing everything together. And this, you know, creating this event is going to bring us all that much closer. And um, I'm excited. July. Yeah, we'll get yeah. the date. Thank you, Sean. We'll pick that date in July. Siri, 
final, two final, final. Let's, let's just, because everything is about shifting perspective and like how we look at the thing. Let's look at it this way. Tony Robbins created all of this because he sold us programs. And there's people out there like, oh, just Tony wants to sell like programs and you just want to sell a program or better, like, like the, you know, the jaded cynical people of the world. And it's okay, I'm not judging them, but who, who behave in that way. Tony created this value. Tony created the value that would generationally change uh, Rob Gill's life, hmm. will generationally change Chris Crone's life. Like Tony created that because he sold us programs, right? Like people go, ah, oh, selling programs is oh, the plat pitch. Like mm. that is so objectively incorrect. Yes. It's unbelievable. And so we have to own that for ourselves though, too. Yeah. So Beck and Sierra, you're not just selling physical coaching, life coaching, intentionality coaching, all the beautiful work that you do, you're creating a, an ecosystem, a world influence that changes people's lives with ripple effect and generationally. <laughs> that like everything here doesn't happen without Tony Robbins. And he's not here. He's not here talking. He doesn't do anything. But he caused it. Yes. And when we build our, our ecosystems, we assemble our audiences, we do these things together, we're doing the same thing. And Tony's created trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of value. Trillions upon trillions. And that's what's like, th we're just a little po tiny part of it today. A little tiny part of it. So does that land on your heart back? Like does that land for you? I feel like it's our responsibility. I mean, Tony Robbins, I truly believe, saved my life in so many ways. And yeah. for all the good and love and light that he puts into this world, I feel that it's our responsibility to carry this forward on our own, to bring everything that he has taught us and, and who we have become through his programs to carry it further. It's a way of honoring that it's a way of of showing our appreciation for that and it's a way of bringing that goodness into the world each and every one of us bringing that goodness that love that light that impact into the world which is a reflection of where it all started amen and i just want to have a, a couple of quick fine folks um is this stephanie see to my left it is yes you want to say quick hello quick? Second hello. Yes. Hello. Hey, we love you. <laughs> Hi, Bella. <laughs> Bella. Bella is Bella's birth name was Stephanie, and and this being Bella, so I switched back. Right. It's a lot of issue conversation. So Bella, yeah. having Beck chasing you up, <laughs> running and screaming for the <laughs> Yeah. yeah, when they're coming in for like their weekend retreat with uh, Melissa Etheridge and, and uh, Sean's like, you know, I think you should really, you know, go to their workout. And so I went and I'm like, I got this. I do theory <laughs> fitness. Like, I'm good. I'm like, we're doing the warm up. And then all of a sudden they're like, okay, you're going to be running up that hill. <laughs> Right, I got this. Like, I'm good. So I start running and then backs behind me. Keep going, pump your arms, go faster, go bell. And I'm like, holy crap, there is nothing that'll make you go faster up a mountain than, than uh back chasing you up a mountain. That Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen to that, Scott. I, I think I got faster that day. Yes. She was so, so fast. <laughs> so and um as we roll into the superpower of influence momentarily, we just wanted to. Um, and we're, I want to bring you back up in a little bit. Steph, I just want to let you say a quick hello. Is that my cue to get, get the heck out? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, 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 we have the amazing uh, Tink Nicole Maello. Is she in the space or is not able to yes. yep. on yep. camera yet? Yep. Yep. Yeah, John. We love Nicole. We love you, yeah, Nicole. you later. So, oh, bye. So, <laughs> we love you. There's only your, one your, thing. So your love dear you guys. friends, uh, Beck and Siri Tink, are saying hello. <laughs> Where's Tink? Hello. Tink. She loves being in the behind the scenes. Yeah, she loves being behind the scenes. Yay. So um, none of this happens. So first of all, we'll we'll introduce Stephanie in a little bit in the HUI section. So, but this 
this woman last night, Nicole Maello, stayed mm -hmm. up until what time? 2 a.m. What time? 2. 2 a.m. Working on slides, working on everything to make today work. She's amazing. She lives that way on a daily basis. It's absolutely preposterously ridiculous. She is the person that convinced me, final, final, to join Platinum Partnership. And if, if she doesn't convince me to do it, uh, um, I don't know where I am. I mean, I, I'm living a life searching because when I did, I was going through a really hard divorce at that time and an immense amount of pain. And I was just beside myself with upset, frustration, pain, feeling sense of loss, feeling taken advantage of it. And, and by the way, it's not, I'm not disparaging my uh, ex-wife. I, I, I would have, I used to, but I've come to a place of taking my own responsibility, all the dynamics. This is not the mother of my children. I think she uh, was trying to poison you, but that's another yeah, story, for she was trying to poison, story for a different day. <laughs> right. So, but a uh, great place now, a beautiful place, full healing, full forgiveness, all the things. Um, and, but I would not have ever been there if it wasn't for Nicole. So I, I just can't thank you enough for the decision. And, and she's been my guide in the platinum partnership room, uh, in so many events, so many of you fine folks know her. Beck and Siri came to know her. She was part of building the relationship with Beck and Siri initially. So I just want to say thank you, Nicole. Up to 2 a.m. What time did I call you? Wake up this morning? I think it came at 6, 6 30. Yeah. So came down, knocked on uh, Tink's door at 6, 6 30 at the beach house. Uh, that was right before I was jumping in the ocean with Chris Crone in the 47 degree water. It was just, like in the teens and the wind chill outside. Um, so thank you. I'm and really the one that's blessed because I mean, if not you, I didn't even know who Tony was to be honest. And I would, you know, wouldn't know what Tony or Platt was and the way being in that room has changed my life. Being there as your guide, the material I learned is you can't, you know, it's, it's indescribable, but it truly is. And no Tony's room, no Beck, no theory. And you are two of the most incredible women leaders I have ever, ever known or heard of. So I'm Please, who are you? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we love you so much. Love you. So, so want to say thank you um, all. And just Joan Greco, I want to ask you if any, any final, final comment from you on this segment. Your leadership is present. You're extraordinary and you're impacting the world, Joan, in, in huge ways. Anything you'd like to add in final, final? Good. Okay. So Joan is complete. Scott, love you, brother. Beck, Siri. No, she, she needed to be unmuted, I think. Oh, she yes. Muted. Can we support Joan unmuting? I can go. I can go yeah. Good. Thanks, Nick. So, um, and we are rolling into immediately from here into the superpower of influencing your HUI, Foundational Principles 4 and 5. This space, this work we're about to uh, share with you None of the ability to put all this together exists without the superpower of influence. And it's a real, it, this is not pitching, hooking, closing. This is not um, NLP. This is not, um, you know, how do we, the 99 ways to close somebody. It's a whole different story. We're not going to do a deep dive on it. We'll spend about 30 minutes total on these foundational principles, four and five. But if we don't bring them present for today, then we haven't served you. Uh, because we're going to give you the quick, this is a hundred hours of content. We're going to deliver though takeaways for 30 minutes on how to go from hello to yes with integrity in the space of plat and the do not, because there's major do nots that I think people really struggle with. One do not is do not walk up to Siri and say, Hey Siri, would you be on my podcast? Unless you've got, I, I, she's not saying it. I'm saying it. Unless you have an audience of like tens of thousands of views it's not an integrous ask. And I'm not, being, I'm not being critical if you have, please understand this. But if you're not gonna pay her to do it, she's not saying it, I'm saying it for her and she could disagree with me. So I'm, I'm like coaching Siri from afar. This is not something she's asking for, not even something I'm saying she agrees with, but I will tell you, I believe it would be non-integrous if you haven't um, paid Siri, donated money to the ranch to ask her to be on your podcast, unless you have tens of thousands of uh, views, that is not a good use of her time she is helping you massively more than you're helping her, which, which equals non-integrity as we defined it here today, as we defined it here today. So um, I wouldn't even ask her to comment on that. And she, you know, what you could call Siri to ask her. If Thank we, you, Sean. It makes my job easier. <laughs> she says yes to everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm getting better at Sean. Thank She's getting you. better. Thank she you so you. much. I yeah. you've always been kind of a protector of mine, and I thank you so much for that because I I do struggle uh, to say no. Yeah, and and maybe what I would offer is maybe to just say, listen, I love you so much. I'd be happy to do it. You have to have a conversation with Beck. You know, we have a way of thinking. We do and actually, and, and and say, and so we have a way of thinking about these things that we're, you know, we we honor Tony's work. We we actually, and you can drop my name and say Sean's, you know, coach oh, we do. Hey, <laughs> that that there's a there's a way to like integrously do things. You're a wonderful person, and your intentions are absolutely pure for sure. But we think about it a little differently, you know, and want to share with you a way to think about this and something we've learned. That might be a great way to talk about it. Does that make sense? Thank you, Sean. Learning, always learning. We're all always learning. I'm really excited. I'd like to make one last comment, if I can. Yes, please. So um, uh, I don't know if everyone has noticed this. I'm sure you have. Is that Sean has been able to put something together, uh, very heart based. If you can't feel the love that's pouring out in this in your screen, it's um, pretty amazing. Um, so it's heart-based and full of integrity, but yet reaching a goal. Yeah. So thank you. That was it. And, and, yeah. and, it's, and please understand too, we did a, her we all have leakage. We did a horrific job because we had nine things happening this week. And this was like, like just an idea that spun out of, Hey, let's create valuable videos for people in plat and how to do plat. And let's train Adam on the best ways to do it. Not that Adam, I mean, he's a master already, but let's give him the, like optimal, optimal micro distinctions. And then we had, you know, a, a video editor challenge that wasn't available, like a whole bunch of things happened. So this got put together, like with virtually no effort. And I was learning so much just on the videos coming in. So of yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so please understand this was like, like so suboptimally um, uh, put out there and marketed. And we're going to thank some people specifically in the wild that helped and talk about the value for them and everybody else. But this is the value that gets created. And all of a sudden, you know, $50,000 are raised for Believe Ranch and Rescue. Like that's the power of what's created. And businesses are being created, I'm sure, in this dynamic, like happening already. So again, Joan, Scott, Beck, Siri, Tink, Stephanie, uh, Tink, this is happening now. Love you. We're going to roll into the influence piece now. So Grateful. thank you. Love you guys. And we love you so oh, we much. Love you. Thank, you. thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm going to shake up the energy a bit. I'm going to like uh, stand and I'm going to start delivering. And I would honor you guys and offer you guys. Yeah. Rob Gill. Oh, if somebody else wants to do another five for me, I'll do another five. You're, I am, I'm actually. Oh, hold on. I, have, okay. well, I know someone that does. So you got it. No, Are you serious? If yeah. Anyone, if anyone's willing to do another five, I'll do another five. I Rob have it. Gil, jumping in. Rob, Nick, Nick, on camera Nick, that. Nick Bufano. Nick Bufano, Nick Rob. Bufano said, said yes. Come on camera, Rob Gil. I want to hug you, you mother effer. <laughs> That's 60, I'll do another five if anyone wants to do another Six, five. Nick Dick. Oh, done. Nick. Yeah, Nick. I can't hear you. I can't see you, brother, but excellent. That's amazing. I want to hear from this man in a little bit. So, but listen, we're going to jump in this super chat. Sure so, brother, mic, just hit. Right? Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, not, so give me that mic right there. The stand up mic. I want the stand up mic. Thank you. They're awesome. All, they're, they're all stand up. They're all whatever. Okay. You can't see. I can't see. All right. So ready? So I want just for people right now that are out there, shake yourself. Shake get your up. energy up. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's 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 go. let us 30 minutes hard, influence master right now. But 3,000 counts on Wall Street, all the things, just to open, a lot of people know this already, but to open the listening, I have a $250,000 bet <laughs> with anybody in the world for charity. Pick the charity, it could be Believe Ranch or Rescue. If I could be out of influence on a huge set of facts, I would happily pay it if you beat me and learn from you. I would challenge Grant Cardone, no show. The manager of Jordan Belford said yes, then backed out. I'm not saying Jordan even knew about it, but the manager did in our last time at Miami. I don't say it disparagingly. It's a competitive sport influence. The ability, how would you in 20 seconds articulate the ability we have to teach influence here for people that they're going to get in the next 30 minutes, even if they've heard me speak 15 times before? It's actually an organic map that you can plug, plug into to the degree that you plug into. It will be the degree of your success. If you're feeling great one day, if you're not feeling great, if you follow the metrics, the material, the map, and the language, 
then you can begin to create predictable outcomes. Let's go, brother. All right. So um, steps four and five, guys, hang, please. If you can, if you can, that's cool for, I mean, meaning on camera, if you can, but if not, that's cool. Yeah, I'll be in and out. Yep, in and out. So let's go. So here we go. So steps four and five. Here's the steps four and five, right? Uh, a foundation principle is four and five. The superpower for influence and your HUI. But let's first, Adam, I'm going to step into, do you want to grab a seat real quick and we'll go back and forth yeah, in a second? Yep. So foundation principle number four, right, is that influence is a superpower. We have a slide in this. We have four steps, 12 in the spend, 12 in the four energies. We are definitely not teaching all that today. No way. Four steps, 12 in the spend, one uh, elements, and four energies of influence. And we are when you say influence, we're talking about something that affects your, your marketing, your selling, your leading, your managing, your marketing, selling, leading, managing, your recruiting, partners, employees, teammates, your fundraising, for-profit, not-for-profit, those seven things, and every other, those seven things, fundraising, for-profit, and not-for-profit, that's number six and seven. It affects your recruiting, five. It affects your leading, four. Managing, three. Two, selling, one, marketing. Put them in anywhere you want. It affects all those things. And the ability to go from hello to yes is what we're talking about with integrity. Heart-centered integrity, hello to yes. That's what we are talking about, okay? So the... The energies surround, the four energies surround 12 indispensable elements, which surround four steps. That's the dynamic of influence. So first of all, first takeaway for you today is influence is superpower and your rise and mastery of it changes your money, time, and magic, right? So write this down. We said process influence self-mastery rooted in the ability to impact your money, time, and magic is what today is all about. Now, influence, hello to yes, process mastery, which we're going to get to in a little bit, is about knowing what to do with your influence, knowing what to do with it. Okay? So that's process mastery. Self-mastery, which is like the, the heart and core of Tony's universe, which is what UPW and DWD is, self-mastery, is mastering yourself to use your superpower of influence because we have a fear of rejection and fear of failure, which we're not talking about right now in this section, okay? This section of influence being a superpower, right? We're good? Okay, thank you. So influence being a superpower, again, is hello to yes, influence mastery, how you get yourself to use it, process mastery, and self-mastery, I'm sorry, is what you do to use it and getting yourself to use the self-mastery. So now, so if we're not going to cover all the stuff, then what are we going to do in these next 25 minutes since we're five minutes in? Here's what we're going to do. The outcome of every interaction you have with a plat, the outcome is rooted in modeling. It's the outcome that Oprah Winfrey said is the reason she held the microphone for 30 years thousand people and became a multi-billionaire her words not mine she said that the reason she held it and held that influence is because when she communicate these people they heard i see you i hear you and what you say matters to me i see you i hear you and what you say matters to me. That is the outcome number one of every interaction you have with every person that you meet in Platt and in the world. Because to be in integrity, you go, why do you use this integrity thing? Is that like just a word you add to it? What do you mean by integrity? I told you add more value than you take, but watch the integrity, a, a micro distinction in how integrity in your influence actually shows up. If I'm only happy and excited to talk to Chris Crone, then I'm, and I walk past the um, person in the restroom at a Tony event who's cleaning the sinks, and I don't acknowledge this person in any way, shape, or form and ignore them like they don't exist, I believe in my, my nervous system, I feel out of integrity. 
because I'm pretending to be a certain person to one group of people who I want something from and to somebody else, I'm pretending I'm being something that I actually am, which is not caring about people. So the way we begin in integrity of I see you, I hear you, what you say matters is we're that way with the Uber driver, we're that way with the server in the restaurant, we're that way with Tony Robbins, we're that way with our family, we're that way with everyone. Now, by the way, I am not perfect at this, neither are you. So none of the, the level of influence we're talking about is rooted, is rooted in perfection. It's rooted in where we are on the scale of mastery. So maybe we are regularly showing up like a 9.5 in that way. Maybe some of us are showing up at a four in that way. But we're not like beating ourselves up and saying, oh, we're terrible. We're talking about how do we rise consistently so we're in our integrity. And our integrity again is everybody, I see you, I hear you, what you say matters. And you go, wait a minute. I can't do that for everyone. I can't talk to everybody forever. Tony can't talk to everybody forever. Nobody can. We have a limited amount of time, but you can give your presence to people just for a moment. Tony is a master at this. He's unbelievable how much he loves people. He will give like that just second of like a look, a touch and move on. And like, it's incredible. So that is a person. And, and by the way, you know, for those that are new and haven't not had the, the privilege, being a lion, I've been at Tony's home and Sage's home uh, multiple times. And with nobody watching, nobody on camera, nobody anything, that man, his level of love for people and integrity cannot be overstated. There was everybody gone from his house. I had somebody help me out. He grabs me. He's like, how are you going to get out of my backyard? And I'm like, Tony, I'm fine. I, I know you're busy. Like I was trying not to take up space and you know, do all the things we're talking about. Integrity, add value. Add value by not taking up space and energy. And he's like, no, no, no. He breaks off a conversation he's having. He grabbed, well, first of all, he grabbed my arm and Tony's hands are large. And then he walked me by the hand from the back, his deep backyard, all the way to the front door, right? As we were getting on the bus and asking me all the questions about my vision and sight. Nobody would watch. Nobody could see. There was no audience. There was nothing. The guy had been spending the whole day. Everybody's trying to talk to him and take up his energy and space. I can't even imagine how exhausted a human being would be being like Tony in the world all the time. So I share that because what he said is what Oprah said, Sean, I see you, I hear you, and what you say matters. And in that 60 second walk from the backyard to the door, he gave me a lifetime memory, an impact that's completely insane. And we could do the same thing for other people. We could do the same thing for the person washing the sink at an event who tells you their story that they came from another country where their father was an entrepreneur, had money, made things, and it's so hard for them. And they're, they're, they don't have money, but they're so happy they're in the United States and all the different things when they escaped Cuba years ago. And by the way, that's a person who was a washroom attendant at a date with Destiny, the first one I ever went to. So I perfectly and perfectly strive to give people that presence and energy. And I'm not making myself better. People are absolutely incredible. And I'm sure I, I miss opportunities tons of times, but I was like, I could see out of the corner of my eye, like everybody's what, like everybody's rushing to get back in the room and things are happening, of course. And this guy's like just cleaning the, the bathroom and like just, I, I could feel pain. And think of what we could do for people. It, what we could do, to, we, we also want to change the world. How much can we change the world if we're just saying to everyone, I see you, I hear you, what you say matters and being present to it. So that's principle number one in everybody you talk to. Now, principle number two is how do we actually do that? And we actually do that with something we call level five listening. I'm gonna give you a quick treatment on level five listening, super quick. And this is like the massive value, massive value of how to just like give influence right now to have your relationships accelerate even more within the platinum partnership. So the con, here's what level, let's go with level negative one listening. So Adam, you ready? Yes. Now let's go back and forth. So, um, hey Adam, how are you? I'm good. Awesome. Um, Adam, who's your favorite football team? Uh, the New York Giants. Oh man. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to Connecticut uh, on Saturday. Okay. That's level, that, like, that's level zero listening. 
just literally ignoring what the person said and changing the subject, taking it somewhere else. That's a crazy example, but it happens a lot. Level zero. Let's go level one. Hey, Adam, who's your favorite football team? The New York Giants. Oh, awesome. Um, I'm a, a big fan of the Jets. Oh, yeah, they're okay. Yeah. Level one listening. As soon as we in our communication take it back to ourselves, we've broken rapport. And we are not moving further in the relationship with a human being, right? So let's keep this going real quick. So Adam, um, let me ask you a question. Um, yeah. What do you do for a living? Uh, I um, help businesses accelerate. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm a, um, I own a law firm. Level one listening, taking it back to me. But level two listening would be like, oh, cool. Yeah, that, that, that sounds fun. So you, you work with businesses. That's level two listening. It's mirroring back what the person said. That ain't level five. So Adam, uh, why, why do you do that? Well, uh, yeah, you know, I, I feel like I was actually born to be on this earth to help, help others uh, achieve what they're looking for. Level one listening, really? I love people too. That's level one listening. Hey, Adam, yeah, I really love people too. Oh, that's cool. That's why, you know, we can be friends, I guess. How little is done there. Level two is really cool. It's so, I, I, I get it. You, you really love people. Yeah, I do. Actually. That's level two. Okay. Level three is, hey, Adam, that must come from somewhere. Where's that come from? That's level three. It's inferential listening. It's logical, right? And by the way, this is all stuff that we've created. Right. So just to be clear, this is not something I read in the book. Right. So it's inferential listening. Right. We're going to skip level four because the distinctions to unpack between level four and five would take a, to really land would take like an hour. So we're not doing that. But let's jump right to level five and say this. So, Adam, what I'm hearing. So let me lay down for a second. So, at, stand up. Leave your mic stand up. Thanks. So, Adam. So, because when we're, when we're acknowledging, we want to take a lower positioning so it's a truly receive. So, Adam, what I'm hearing is the deepest level of heart centeredness and love for people. And I'm feeling in awe. Um, brother, like I was expecting you to say, oh, you know, I like to make money, help people make money. I can't believe what I just heard. Where does that come from? Actually, um, ever since I was young, I uh, found myself in situations where people would be getting picked on or bullied. And, uh, you know, in those moments, I've always felt the need to like stand up for those people. And, and, and whether it was physical or just with my words, do whatever I can to, to you know, have their back mm -hmm. in those moments. And I knew that. Pause for me. Pause. That happens in 60 seconds. The difference between, oh, oh, yeah, cool, versus that. That changes everything. And it imprints Adam's heart and soul with I see you, I hear you, and what you say matters. And if, if, I had, if I was going to be beamed to a different world and I had five minutes, if I had 30 seconds to teach influence, I would say level five, listen to people, meaning be fully present to what's on their heart, what they're saying, what they're not saying, what's underneath. Ask questions, listen deeply, and just want to know what touches their heart and acknowledge them authentically for it and your life will change hey g your thoughts yeah no uh, i could feel it coming um even in the questions the disconnect the feeling more and more getting into my heart and uh, the the gift people say all the time is well what can i that what value can i bring to that person you're nothing you've done in your life and your career and your business um had anything to do with the gift of allowing me right now to connect to something as deep and as emotional as that, you could have been anybody. Um, 
you know, to be able to go there. So that's, that was massive value. I, I felt but to be able to share that, um, even in this moment, I had no idea today that I, I'd get a chance to, to talk about that. Yeah. And, and so how did it, that. so what I'm saying is that's how it actually feels and how magical and awesome that felt. Yeah. Is that true? That is, it felt unbelievable. Yeah. Magically. Yeah. I almost, yeah. I, I was feeling emotions welling up. Yeah. I could feel you were feeling emotions welling up. And if we spend another 60 seconds, I think both of us sort of cried. Yeah. I think we're right on the, the cusp. Cause I yeah. started asking you why bullying, how that felt like. If I started telling stories about friends and things, there, it would have been all over. I would, we would have needed tissues. And... and so please don't hear this as saying, oh, so you're here. I remember the first unblinded event and we had a person that spoke on our stage who after we were sharing, and we were talking about like getting to a point of deep emotion, deep connection, people crying. This person took our stage and said, well, you, you know, just be, to be clear, you don't have to, you know, make people cry like to sell them. And I remember like, it felt like an arrow through my soul. And so we're not saying to try to make people cry. What we're saying is, when you say to people through your questions, your acknowledgements, you're listening, I see you, I hear you, and what you say matters, you're giving people such a massive gift, such value, that they're going to be overwhelmed with gratitude and very often cry. That's what we're saying. And why wouldn't you want to give something that valuable to people? That costs nothing. Yeah. And we're just not taught this. It's all good. And then what happens yeah. is because you asked such a deep question and connected to my heart that quickly, I became, I would become very interested in you because that's congruently unique in what you just did. And I would. Yeah. Well, so so and, that's it. So I see you, I hear you to um, this point, just emphasize yeah. it, right? I see you, I hear you, what you say matters. We then show up, he said the words as the second takeaway you want to show up as congruently unique. Now we're foundational principle number four, number five is HUI, which is step three. We're not there yet. We're not talking about you being congruently unique because of your elevator pitch. We're not talking about you being uh, congruently unique because of any pitch. We're talking about being congruently unique because I see you, I hear you and what you say matters delivered with integrity, authenticity, full presence. And it is not from how to win friends and influence people, the chapter on authentically, you know, comment, compliment somebody on something to like move forward. It's much richer than that. It's like, oh, wow. Hey, nice shirt. Okay. Not bad, but not, I see your heart and your soul, brother. And you're such an unbelievable human being. Where does that come from? Well, kids are bullied. Well, why can I ask this, Adam? Like, what was present for you? Because a lot of kids are bullied and a lot of kids don't step in. You're not like the biggest guy in the world. Why did you, why'd you do that? I, <clears throat> when I would be in those moments, I would somehow connect and feel the pain of that person. And I would know that I had the ability to, to step in. Um, whether it was something I could say or do, and it, it just gave me an unbelievable pause. Yeah. Unbelievable. Just feeling inside that I was able to, to help that person. Yeah. I was pausing because we're just, we're just doing exercise. And Adam has tears that have welled. And he knows what I'm doing. Hmm. And we're just doing exercise, but we're not just doing exercise because I love him and want him to be able to share that piece of his heart. And so that, like, this is the thing, massive value transfer, deepening our relationship, deepening his HUI, illustrating the point, teaching the exercise. That's what integrous influence is. It is multifaceted dynamics of creating positive dynamics. And again, going back to principle number one of the day, modeling Tony, it's what Tony does in the event. When a million dollars gets raised for charity, everybody's crying. People are feeling amazing about each other. Energy's flowing and positive things are happening. His identity is rising. People's identities are rising. The people contributing are getting value. The charities get 
all of these things are compoundingly happening at the same time. And one of the most beautiful and challenging, beautiful and challenging things for all of us to do is to realize the compounding building effect of our influence and go from holy to yes, which we're going to get to at step six, right? But we're only four, superpower of influence. And so far we talked about is, I see you, I hear you, what you say matters, one, two, to be congruently unique, congruently unique so that people become curious. The key distinction too, I Please think, is you. that, you know, there's no script. You don't tell me anything before the day starts. Yeah. You don't tell anyone to prepare for anything. And even in these, these when you're having, you know, conversations with people on the phone or in person, the fact that there is no, there is no script and you're, you're out of your head, you're, you know, you're in your heart. This is, yeah. this is just real and authentic. That's it. And when you do that, people are like, as Robert Cialdini teaches in his book, Influence, and, which is a study, it's not how to influence, really. It's a study on how influence works, which incredible studies he cites. It's a, a, it's a wonderful book to anchor on how the superpower of influence actually exists. And I'm going to make two comments in a second on it. Um, but in it, he talks about the principle of reciprocity. So once you give something so beautifully valuable to people, it invokes their desire to give back to you. Like in that conversation, like Siri, Beck, and I are so deeply connected in this like reciprocity cycle, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, I just want to help them. They want to help me. And like, I feel the same way about Rob Gill. And, you know, Rob and I work day to day a lot more together. Same way with you mm -hmm. and what you gave up. I mean, Adam walked away from eight figures to be a part of this company. It's crazy. I am committed in reciprocity to making his dreams come true. Tink getting, speaking up to 2 a.m., doing the things I want to make the things that she wants to happen in the world happen in the world. Like that's what reciprocity invokes, but understanding that it's so much more it, it, to, to belittle pitching, hooking, close, like to belittle ourselves into the, the frame, the, the vibrational frame of pitching, hooking, closing. I'm not criticizing anything. I, I, like that, how does that feel vibrationally in your body? Hey, what's your pitch? Like, look. Right? Like, isn't that the reaction? Like, so, and I want to, hey, you know, Adam, did you close those people? Come on, dude. And then I'm going to get on here and talk to you about integrity and love. And I'm going to go, hey, Adam, did you close those people? Oh, all right. Check the camera. Still oh, yeah. No. So everybody, let's <laughs> love everybody. Like, there's a massive incongruence. And that's why it's step four. We call it agreement formation, not closing. Right? Oh, so it's like just you change the word. No, it's a lot more than that. It's an energy of not taking and getting, but finding value, like you heard with Siri and Beck, when our mind starts thinking about, okay, if, if everybody brings five, Beck and Siri didn't ask for that, right? But if they did, they'd still be in integrity because they're adding massive value by having people come there and be able to tell people to come there and create that massive cycle of value. And then if Beck and Siri said, yeah, we'll shoot a, I'll shoot a video with everybody who's there. I'll shoot a, a two minute video with everybody who comes to the ranch. Huge value for doing a video with Siri Lindley, right? Or let's say if Chris, Chris said, hey, uh, the top 10 people who bid is something, something, I'll do a YouTube video with them or something. Like there's endless ways to co-create value when you start unpacking it, but you never get to any of it without the ability to get to yes. And to make this as simple as possible, I hired, uh, 17 years ago, 2004 it was, I hired four salespeople and appointment bookers. Three of the four booked zero meetings, zero meetings in the first two weeks, zero. The fourth one booked 30. So zero, zero, zero for three people, 30 for the other person. All those people blame the lead, the opportunity, blah, 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 blah. this other person booked 30 meetings. There's no number that we can multiply times zero to get to 30, right? A, a billion times zero equals zero. So it wasn't like a, a little better. It wasn't even, so it wasn't like linearly, like a little bit better. Like, oh, like I'm a size seven or size nine and a half shoe. And oh, I'm a 10 and a half, like not a little more, right? Um, it wasn't like, oh, I have like, uh, you know, $10. Oh, I have like 15 bucks, not a little more. It wasn't exponential. It wasn't like I have $10. Oh, I have 10,000. 
No, no, no. Zero to 30 is infinite, the difference. So the superpower of influence is infinitely often different and at least exponentially often different. So the point is our influence, our ability to do things is to create clients, ecosystem mergers, the events, everything we're talking about is to recruit, to manage, to lead, to raise money, to market sell. All of it is foundationally, fundamentally, endlessly rooted in this superpower of influence. And the foundational point we're saying to take away for now is everything is about I see you, I hear you, and what you say matters. It doesn't mean you lie. It doesn't mean, like, I coach Siri today. I lovingly confronted. I dealt with something like, Siri, love you, but don't, you know, how about not this? Instead of doing, no, Siri, hold on. Instead of doing that, let's do this. So it, so I see you, I hear you, what you say matters isn't lying to people. It's not pleasing everyone. It's not placating people. It's being fully present, heart-centered, open, and also loving people enough to talk about things respectfully, humbly, right? And P.S., P.S., and I'm, I'm just being we're always super real. We are not perfect at this. I am not claiming to be perfect. Rob and I had a meaningful disagreement the other night. I was, and I, I stepped out of my self-mastery, and this is right before Chris got there, and I left a message like, oh, I'm done, blah, blah, like, and it was just, and it was because it was over a conversation I didn't like the way his tone was in the conversation. I'm not kidding. It was, a, it was a day my self-mastery shrank, the whole thing. So I love, I, love, I love telling on myself. I love us being authentic. And so it wasn't like a big fight about something. It was just, it was a silly, semantical part of the conversation. And I was like, you know, I've spoken about it, you know, like feel, it doesn't, I, I told him that doesn't feel good for me when we communicate that way about that thing. And I lost it. I said something super disrespectful, super crazy. So I'm just sharing this to say like, I am not professing to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. But then I apologize a few minutes later. We worked it out over the weekend, a whole bunch of different things, right? For all of us, the intention is I see you, I hear you, what you say matters. And the way we resolve that, is I tried to step into Rob's shoes and say, okay, what was Rob feeling? What was Rob thinking? And when I started asking questions fast, what does that bring up for him? How does it make him feel? How can we figure out a better pattern, right? So it's stepping into the other person's shoes. You see what Yes, thought? but if I could just acknowledge you, okay. it's amazing how you could feel a thought. Um, this also exemplifies- I can you. feel a thought. Yes, and, and that's when we shape our, it's not a superpower. It, it is a superpower. It's not metaphysical, but I could see peripherally Adam's body language just a slightly, so I knew he had something to say. Yeah. And that's when we're like, our listening is sharp and present. But You sharing that story with Rob, once again, exemplifies- what Bella says about you being the same in front of the camera as off the camera as you are. And it's the same going back to having love for all people and, and having to be authentic and, and, and genuine uh, across the board. So it's all, that was just another example, you telling that story transparently of what you're teaching right now. No, well, thank you. Appreciate that very much. Brother. And, and authentically acknowledging everybody for being here, the learning, the time, the energy, Still, still building, growing on it. So influence is a superpower. I see you, I hear you, what you say matters, uh, what you say matters to me. Outcome of every interaction is congruent uniqueness. So the person becomes curious, congruent uniqueness. And the easiest way, we just simplify all this into a very short section. The simplest way to be congruently unique is to say, I see you, I hear you, what you say matters to me. Oh, Adam, wow, that really matters to me. That's not what we're saying. Uh, wow, uh, yeah, well, that's really cool, man. Like, not fake. So like, okay, let me go through the script. Let me go through the four energies, uh, 12 indispensable elements, four steps. Um, let me just touch on that for 60 seconds. I heard you looking for me. Yes, you, you mother. You <laughs> <laughs> Rob Gill. So, all right, ready? So the four energies are this, the fun aspirational God is Zeus. We're not even dropping into them. The point, our energetic variance is vital for influence. That's all I'll say about the energies. Energetic variance is vital for influence. There is no influence without energetic transfer. 
And it could be as quiet as, wait, what? You, you did what? How, how did you do that? It's crazy. Wait, you built a, you took a company from $3 million to $750 million in three and a half years? Like, am I, is that, was that in the news? Like, I don't understand. Oh. That's, so it doesn't have to be blah, 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 blah. It could be like that. Like, like I'm sorry. Three to seven, 150 million. Really? That's how our conversation occurred the first time Adam told me that story. So energetic transference could be from pauses. It could be presence, body language to like, right? There's language that tells people that are listening. We can do this for a hundred hours. I'm going to pause on foundational principle five, four, to get the foundational principle five for just a moment. Uh, foundational principle number five is all about step three, our heroic unique identity. And take, am I correct that this principle is heroic unique identity, ego, significance, this whole thing, right? So, Yes. Yep. Thank you, homie. So what we're going to do here real quick is this piece. Heroic unique identity is how you're congruently unique. So people become curious. We just mentioned that that step that's we affirmatively tell our stories at step three. We have, I mean, endless things to unpack here. That's not the purpose of today to teach influence. That's not what we're doing just to identify it with a couple of key principles, but this is vital at foundational principle number five. If we are not present to the difference between the need of growth and the need of significance, growth and significance, and the, and I'm gonna, by the way, I wanna see if Patricia Marseille could jump in and chat a bit on this principle if Patricia's available when we conclude, I'd love the two of you to go back and forth for a moment on this. Cause I think Patricia has so much value to add on this yeah, key point, yeah, right? Awesome. Okay. So, Humility versus false modesty, growth versus significance, and how we communicate our mastery. If Adam Gugino doesn't tell me in his story, now, by the way, I did a great job questioning and asking questions. If he doesn't tell me a story, the Capitol Grill in 2019, we're not here. None of us, this is not happening. I could, I could, I'll bet that, that this is not happening if I don't meet Adam right now. Thank you. So this is not happening. So in, if Adam was falsely modest, I offer you this, you take, this isn't like tips, this is like a formula, but if you don't wanna take it, don't take it. The, what I present to you, what I offer to you is this principle, that there's a distinction between humility and we will define humility as not thinking that we are, we are better or less than anyone else. That's how we're defining humility, right? We get to define words however we want. That's certainly within the definition of humility. We're gonna define false modesty as lying. Lying. Oh, no, not me. I mean, I do that too. Oh, no, 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 please. And, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to serve. I'm, I'm just trying to serve, you know? No, Rob, you just donated $10,000. You just don't have $10,000. It's unbelievably generous, beautiful, and incredible. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just, no, no, no. I didn't do anything. That's lying. You just did a lot. You just fed and saved two horses. You did a lot. So false modesty is where we make what we've done less. Adam, oh, no, no. I, you know, I, I'm just a sales guy. I just train salespeople. No, <laughs> you took a company from three to $750 million, Inc. 500 magazine, three consecutive years. You're not just a sales guy. And, and if he had done that, they're like, what do you do? I'm in sales. You know, I work for this, this company. I never would have any idea who the guy was. So he would have lied to me and deprived me of the opportunity to be delivering and serving with you and Beck and Siri. And Rob and Tink and Bella and, and Fernando and the whole thing. 
So when we are falsely modest, we're lying and not telling the truth. If Siri's like, oh yeah, I was like in triathlons and whatever, and I want to be a triathlon world champion, I don't know she was the world champion. I don't know all the things, all the story, and she doesn't own her amazingness with humility. I think she's better or less. But like if a plumber knows how to change, like if I, my cousin's a plumber, and he's at my house for Christmas, and there's a problem with the toilet, and my cousin doesn't go, oh, I can fix that. And the, the toilet may stay clogged. The problem doesn't get fixed and nobody knows. So what I offer you is that humility is saying, yeah, you know, I mean, just listen, everybody's got their skill sets, um, but I have done something that very few people in the world have ever done. Yeah, I've, I've taken a company from three and a half million to $750 million. When I say I'm one of two attorneys in the country out of 1.2 million, to create two top 100 jur uh, national jury verdicts, one of uh, two out of 1.2 million between 2014 and 16, and the only one that was blind, I say that so people get how unique my influence skill set is. When I say I've spoken on Tony Robbins stage 14 times, I don't say it in pride because, by the way, I don't think I would ever tell anybody that again. And I know this because I didn't even have a Facebook page or social media when I was a business owner, not operator of my law firm. And now we're into growth. The point of growth versus significance right now. Let's blow this up right here, right now for everyone, for your heart, for everything forever. Growth says I need to acquire and build my HUI integrity, the truth of what I can do so I can keep growing, contributing, giving. Significance is I want to tell you this because I want to feel better and I want to feel proud of myself. I don't any longer feel proud at all at this stage. It's become all based on my own stuff that I spoke on Tony's stage 14 times. I don't feel proud that I had two top 100 national jury verdicts. I do feel proud. I do feel proud that I get on airplanes and fly back to see my kids between things that I feel proud of. The other stuff, yeah. Like I'm, I'm thankful to God for it because it helps with growth. I'm thankful for the contribution, the whole thing. But the distinction is, are we talking about the thing for, from a place of pride and to make ourselves feel better than somebody else? Or are we sharing it so people get the truth of who we are and what we can do? That is the distinction between significance and growth. And I have noted a pattern in two decades of 24 years now of creating this formula. I have noted a pattern in heart-centered people like Siri, like Beck, with humility, myself. I've learned how not to do this. Adam, most of you, P platinum partners, uh, people in the Tony room, <clears throat> like, immense percentage of heart-centered people, like the heart-centered, dominant heart-centered people, amazing human beings, that we want to hide and be less. We want to be falsely modest and lie because we're afraid that we will come across mm -hmm. as significance driven. Yeah. We're afraid we will come across as significance driven. I'm going to tell you something right now. You will be if you, if you are building in the world. Google Tony Robbins is something negative, is a scumbag. Google uh, Jesus is a fraud. Google Mother Teresa is, you know, uh, a fraud, a liar. Anyone that's ever created leadership or influence will have hundreds of thousands and millions of Google results for negative things being said about them, which is all rooted in people thinking that they are significance driven and fraudulent versus heart centered and growth minded. Now, I don't know some of those people. I have the privilege of knowing Tony at some level, and I will submit to you, he is not significance-driven. He's heart-centered. But I've had a ton of people who said to me, Tony Robbins is significance-driven. I don't believe he is. I, I'm not perfect. I, the, only person who, the only person who actually knows the truth is the person themselves, if they're truly self-aware. But I don't believe that at all. I think he's brilliantly growth-minded. I didn't know him 30 years ago, the person I've had the privilege of encountering in the space, 
is absolutely unbelievable. But my point is Tony faces that crap too. Everybody does. Everybody faces misportrayal. But we are, to build our mission, people need to know what we can do and what we can create. Adam, what is present? I'm, I'm just so present to now, even you sharing my story several times today. And there's, there's zero for me pride in, in it at this point. It is really truly about how that share can help me impact and, and do the things that we're, we're here to do together. It's just so present yeah, to that. Absolutely. And that, you know, hiding and not sharing is more significance driven because of your fear of being judged. Say that, say that loud and clear, brother. Listen, this is drop the mic vital, please. That hiding and not sharing uh, my story. And even when you got me into my heart is more significance driven by being, because I'm in fear of being judged. And that was very present for me as well. Yeah. I had, so what Adam, let me just say one more time and write this down. What we are submitting, what we believe, what we're sharing as a foundational principle is that you are actually more significance driven if you're hiding your abilities and capabilities out of fear of rejection for a failure, fear of misportrayal of you as significance driven, you're actually more significance driven than if you're humbly, factually, directly, clearly sharing the truth of who and what you are. Chris Crone is not significance driven when he shares that he just bought, brought a, bought a jet, unless he is. But my belief is he's not sharing it for that reason. He put a picture of it on the internet because it makes people know that in his audience that he's successful and they'll want to communicate with him. Now, somebody else might be significant driven in doing that. I don't believe Chris is. And I know Chris really, really well. I could be wrong. I don't believe that to be the case. So for each and every one of us, understanding this principle at the most vital, vital of levels is critical and this could crush and destroy everything. So what I want to do right now, oh, you want to come in? I do. Come on in. What <laughs> yes. is present? I didn't know. We, okay, by the way, team, nobody has to like stand at the door. This is like, come on in and say the things. What's present? Hmm. I, I'm watching in the other room uh, with everyone. And, you know, as you talk about this, like I'm like, this is so present for me. And it's, and it's always present. For me, because, Hi, by the way. Um, because I just personality wise, I can tend to take up space. Like I can walk into a room, not say a word and take up a lot of space. But you're so quiet. I am sometimes. No, you're very quiet. Sometimes. I, I, I am. And, and, um, in, and especially when I walk into new rooms, um, I, I don't use my voice a lot because I, and by the way, for, for those who know, Stephanie is co-host of Real Raw. Um, is absolutely extraordinary, um, my significant other, and is somebody who is out there crushing in the world, has been in the space of influence, coaching, training, developing all the things, has recently uh, uh, enrolled in college and is studying, uh, going to school to be a minister, ministerial school, and um, but makes the real world happen magically all the time, and I will recreate where you are, was in the middle of conversation talking about and by the way, we've hosted hundreds of real worlds together, had you know, thousands of people on. Um, it's got to be in the 300s now since I started in like it's 20, got, it's got 2020. Be Absolutely. Yeah. It's got to be in the 300s, uh, which means it's close to 2,000 people that we've had on together. And um, is, I think, speaking into, you were saying that you take space, you, at times, you energetically come in, you're very friendly. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, because I can, I can energetically, so when I go into new spaces, I don't tend to use my voice a lot um, because I am, you know, I feel, feel like I'll get more judged. And so as I was sitting over there listening, um, you know, part of the reason of going like back to school and going to ministerial school is to add credit to my HUI. Um, and I continuously, you know, and, and it's so important for me because I love people so much. And 
I am so afraid to fully step out and fully use my voice and fully show up in the world because I'm so afraid of like pushing people away or like or being seen as significant and not that I really care that I'm really loving and so I will tend to shrink and and hide and and I've noticed even in the last um you know year which is 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 odd is like the more I'm front front facing on the camera the more I've been I'm blinded I the more I've like shrunk, shrunk back and, you know, stopped sharing, you know, stuff on social media and on all of the things. And I'm just super present to, it is all out of the fear of being significant. So are you going to tell us how we get over that? Um, actually, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, it's, I'm so scared. So the answer is, um, there's this, this, this program, there's this really tall guy um, that has been teaching for 40 years and it's called uh, UPW and then Date With Destiny. And what that tall guy teaches um, so powerfully and wonderfully is if we link massive pain, massive pain to whatever is present for us, and take us through this pattern called a Dickens pattern, right? Where we keep seeing the impact, compounding impact of carrying this thing forward. Then once we have this massive pain, it creates a vacuum to it create a new empowering belief around the thing. So what I would suggest is for anybody who's facing- Right, because I, I know that I'm not the only one and I, and I, and I, and I right. could be hallucinating but I think uh, more women struggle yeah. with that, with this than men. And I could be hallucinating and I can't see the chat, but that, that for, would be my hallucination. For fun, drop the micness. I didn't want to do this today, driving up here. Because I was tired. I was um, in a space and of having gone through a whole long week and I want to serve. But because of my self-mastery slippage, what came into my mind is somebody going to say I am significant driven for doing this? Mm -hmm. Is somebody going to say I'm trying to take because I'm doing this? And then I answered the question and said, of course they are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Of course they are. Because mm -hmm. that's what beautiful souls and mm -hmm. human beings do at times. Some percentage is absolutely unequivocally going to say that. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, I don't want to deal with that today. I don't want to add more stuff. To, I'm, I'm, I've had enough confronts for the week. I'm exhausted. I don't want to do that. If I didn't do that, then Siri and Beck don't have, mm -hmm. and those horses mm -hmm. don't have that. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and. So forgive me, Close your ears, excuse me for one second. Close your ears if you don't want to hear a word of profanity, because I, I, I will give the PSA, <laughs> right? But in fun energy on a beautiful Sunday after a long week, fuck you motherfuckers in the world who would say that, go fuck yourself. I'll have we take a lie detector test and bet you a fucking million dollars that today wasn't significant, driven, or designed to take. Take me in a fucking bet and anybody who says it, I'll see you at the fucking lie detector and you'll write the fucking check to Beck and Siri. So love you all. <laughs> Happy soulful Sunday, right? And say that's just a moment of a quick release and Adam's uh, definitely is like, oh boy, I'm, I hope we should have done that. No, just for fun. There was a disclaimer that came before that. There was a disclaimer. So, and I say that in love. That's, that's not uh, heart center loving communication. That's my survival brain speaking. My higher spiritual brain knows that everybody's an innocent soul. Everybody right, is an active lover cry for help. And I am very present to the reality that folks get scared and folks have significance, you know, challenge of their own and we all make up stories and it's all good, right? So that, what, was that fun energy? That was, that was fun energy. And I think it's, I think, you know, something that you nailed on the head for me and, and, and I feel like I'm gonna anchor this for everybody else is to just accept the fact that people are gonna say that. People yeah, yes. are gonna, like, it, to deal with the reality of, People are already going to say I'm significance driven. Google Tony Robbins is a fraud, please. 
Like they're, and so to deal with that reality. And I think instead of hoping, praying or doing things so that I won't be seen that way is just to accept the fact that I will. And it's like, now what? Yeah. Like so, now what? Yeah. And, and I would say, but think of also like the pain, like that's still painful. We don't want that, right? Like I don't want, I didn't want to jump in the ocean with Chris Crone this morning either. I was tired, right? But I, I got myself in state, got myself ready and did it because I realized the pain of not doing it because we committed to do it. I made a, a pact with myself. I'll never be old. If every time I go to Long Beach Island, I jump in the ocean, I want to break my pact. So the pain of breaking that pact was underneath, like was the pain of uh, breaking the pact was up here and the water temperature was down here. So we have to create the leverage on ourselves to make whatever it is. This is what Tony teaches, right? Fundamentally, UPW, deal with destiny. We have to create massive pain to what it's costing us to maintain that pattern. Yeah. And, and conditioning, you journal like you, you journal like a, a, a master. Journal it, journal it, journal it. Everything is costing you to be succumbing to the fear of rejection, fear of uh, misportrayal, fear of being accused of being significant driven. Google, I mean, write it, everything it's going to cost you and tell right now, everybody, what's it going to cost you if you keep hiding um, at the level you're hiding, what will it cost you? Just start listing things. Go, just tell me one. But the impact. Like the impact, what else? And, and if, if, if you don't have the impact, what does that cost you? What's going to happen? What's not going to happen because the impact is gone. What's not going to happen? Um, Name one thing. Well, it... it if you, for me, if you go that fast, it, it doesn't get deep. So right. for, for, for me, it is the, the, to save one person or to be, or whatever, to save a hundred people from saying I'm significance driven, there are thousands upon thousands that won't be impacted. Tell me the impact though. That's what I know. When you say impacted, tell me something that will cost somebody because you selfishly protect yourself. You selfishly, and I'm not judging you, it's still selfish. If I protected myself today, it's selfish. It's self-focused. <laughs> selfish is self-focused, not judging people, but what would you be depriving somebody of? Uh, well, two things come to mind is one, their dreams, because I you know, got a call just last week from someone I coached like 10 years ago that said that they were living their dream life today. And had I not pushed them, um, they, they probably wouldn't be doing that. And then I had a conversation today with someone who felt like their life was going to end. And they read a Facebook post of mine and felt like one, they got hope and two, they started praying for the first time. So it also like brings people closer to God. I like the second one, right? A lot more than the first. Yeah, it costs people their relationship with God. Yeah. And so do you want to let the pain of a few people, you know, their act of love is a cries for help. Do you want the pain of a few people stop you from saving lives and bringing people to God? No. No, I don't. So let's just... No, I fucking don't. <laughs> so let's add that to it. And by the way, let's just for fun energy. And for fun energy, I would have gone in the ocean today too if I didn't have to wash my hair. <laughs> I only had 30 minutes excuses, to get ready. Excuses, excuses. So I would have gone to the ocean too. Too. So Excuses, excuses, excuses. I know that to be true. So how many? How many hits? Oh, it doesn't have the hits, but there's hundreds. I mean, it doesn't have the total number on my phone, but I've seen it before. In the hundreds of thousands, hundreds all of thousands. kinds of crazy things that I'm that I'm reading. That <laughs> he's a, he's an alien. Just he's like kidnapping. Scam, scam, scam. And you're scam, kind of an alien liar. too, though. That's true. <laughs> so, so Tony cults, absorbs all of cults, all yeah. cults, see, like every crazy thing you could possibly say about somebody. And because he endured that series alive, mm. because he endured that I'm alive, because I don't get to meet Scott Tennant. And I really believe, I really believe I would have gone to surgery and not survived surgery. And there's a very real tract of that, a longer story for a different day. Uh, 10 horses are not saved today. I mean, and just trillions of dollars 
of impact for charities, trees planted, food. Like, so you take it all in the micro, like my life, you're, we're not together. Like Rob, and, Rob is not doing, Rob was in a, a less, a lost place and lost leads to pain and pain leads to, you know, what would have happened in his life over the last four years if there's no Tony Robbins. Well, so for, foreshadowing, I already know because there's so many times I've, you know, been with you speaking, there's going to be at least 25% of the people here that are going to come back and say that this day changed something or impacted them in such an incredible way. I just, that's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And, and if you didn't decide yeah. you were going to step into today, those people yeah. who are listening right now. Yeah. So, so for every one of us, you will be accused of being significance driven or ego driven or full of it or blah, 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 right? And we're not making anybody else wrong. Like they're incorrect. We're not making them horrible people. That's going to happen. Link massive pain to it and realize you are being significance driven and selfish if you're protecting yourself from the rejection of others. Mm -hmm. You are then being, and I'm not judging you for being significance driven or being self-focused. There's no judgment. It's just honesty of what it is, what it is, right? Make sense? Yeah, it makes mm -hmm. sense. So does that help? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so I want to um, turn it over to you and Patricia for a good five, 10 minute uh, wrap up on this section, okay? Patricia Marseille is the conscious leader she is one of the most extraordinary human beings you could ever possibly meet. Um, in fact, I think she does hide a little bit, right? I'm not, you know, I don't want to make like significant positions for protecting herself, but she is one of the most powerful leaders, Disney executive, the conscious leader, coach, trainer, speaker, friend, um, unbelievable person. And Adam and Patricia, like, let's unpack around, okay, you got this conversation around the space of e of significance versus growth and humility versus false modesty and anything else that that genius wants to share. Come back yeah. in a minute. Patricia. Patricia. Patricia! <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Just one of the most heart-centered, incredible human beings that I know. Disney exec, what are you uh, feeling? What are you present to? I am actually really sitting in the space of the last highlight of how sitting in the space of false humility is still significance and the, the, the power of that, since it's all tying back to the ego, it's still tying back to you reflecting on yourself as being deemed more important than the people that you're serving. Yeah. And, and how about just you know, when you're not sharing um, because of your own fear of rejection, your fear of being judged when the value you can add to those who need to hear you most don't hear your message. <laughs> it's probably the part that I feel the silliest about at this moment <laughs> <laughs> because um, Sean is not wrong in the fact that I have been hiding. I kind of, I pop out every once in a while and then I go back into my hibernation mode. So this has highlighted to me so much more how my hiding is a disservice to those that I serve and those that I have yet to serve. So it's, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing humor in it in order to get myself to be playfully curious about leaning into it. Well, let's lean in. Where okay. That's coming from. Where is it coming from? Hmm. The, which part? Just why, why you've in those moments when you know, you have so much, so much to share and uh, so much value to bring. And you just, you, you just have it. Like, is there an example? Do you have, are you thinking about one now? Is it in a certain space? Is it at work? Is it just where, where is it happening? And, and when it does happen, why do you think, you know, you're making that choice? Yeah, it's <clears throat> when I think about the expansion into um, more stages and microphones, it's one of the things that Sean has coached me about from the very beginning in leaning more into that space, uh, especially since the conversation that I bring to the table is how do you lead leaders more effectively and causing greater leadership? And so 
for me, it's been, oh, okay, I'll do it when I'm invited. I'll do it in regards to like my own interview sessions um, and in knocking on a few doors and then I'll just leave it at that. When I think about it in this context today, I'm seeing how much of a disservice that is for the simple fact that I've leaned on my comfort level. So for me, it's been more of, okay, I'll reach out. The greater the crowd gets, I go, see, there are some people in my circle who are gonna think that I'm doing it for the crowd and I'm not doing it for the crowd, I'm doing it for the people. And all of that starts to happen, similar to where Bella was speaking to. Um, but what I've come to is the realization that it's actually, it's so much more about the people, like really having a drive and a heart of service for the people that at the end of the day, the thought of myself and what other people have to say or the chatter of what other people have to say, that chatter is going to exist regardless, whether I do something or not, it's still going to be there. So it's just a matter of me providing the service that I know that's within me. You realize, right? Well, first, before I even say that, I think what I'm, I'm laughing about in my mind is Sean's intentionality and knowing, putting you and I together on this topic, when uh, I could totally relate to what you're sharing and, and not even personally shooting videos when Sean says to, or uh, because I'm worried about how I'm going to look on that angle. And just, it, that's so I'm, I'm thinking through it now. And I, and I know that's one of the main things uh, for me, but you know, right. The power, the strength, the courage, the intellect that you represent, you, you, do you realize that about yourself? So I'm going to <laughs> full transparency. I did not until Sean recently did the exercise about the models, the three fictional models and the three non-fictional models. And we did this earlier in the week. And when I started to talk it out with the people in my ecosystem, I was able to take it a little further because everyone kept responding with every person that I identified as who I wanted to model and why everyone responded with the same response. You are these things already. You already function this way. You already move this way. We already see you this way. And what I came to realize is what we're saying, or at least what I was saying that I wanted to model, when I look at those individuals, I was actually seeing myself in them. And what I was witnessing is how other people see me. And it was a matter of me coming into agreement with myself when I say, yes, I want to model that person. So as of today, I hear what you're saying. And yes, I, I fully receive that because this past week was me coming into agreement with, with what other people are seeing. Wow. Well, I wish I could see you right now. I wish I could hug you right now. And I'm just uh... virtual hug. Yes, and, and Patricia, like you're unbelievable. And just think about what that means, not to you, but to the amount of people that you can empower and support. And if that's happening and you haven't even gotten started, mm -hmm. that inspiration has happened and you haven't even tried. So imagine what's going to happen when you now get intentional about making that impact when you're not afraid to share who you are and what you can do in the world. Agreed. Lives are going to change. Agreed. It fills me <sighs> with such excitement and warmth um, in such beautiful scales because <clears throat> I used to look at my why in the space of I never want another leader to sit in a position of leadership for which they have no one showing them or exemplifying for them the proper way to go. That 
they're sitting in this space of deficit because I knew what it was like where I was struggling in leadership and had no one to model, had no one to figure it out with in my particular subject, in my space. But now my mind has flipped to, I'm not doing it so much for the deficit, I'm doing it for the possibility. I'm doing it for the possibility of what this world can be, how we can work together as leaders and how we can really assist this world in advancing in what it should be and how we should communicate with one another. It's one of the key reasons why I love this community, the Platt community, the unblinded community, because everyone is leaning on that same type of leadership flow. Each one teach one. So yeah, I'm excited about it. No, and the the truth of that and the, even for for myself personally, what I'm hearing is that feeling of um, when I was at date with destiny and, uh, actually Joan came up to me and, and, and mentioned, wow, Adam, you're, you're, you're extraordinary. And, and I remember my initial, uh, reaction in my mind was cause we were just doing your, your, you know, your primary question. And it was my fear of letting people down, um, was my primary question. How do I not let, let somebody down? And in that moment, I realized that I was like scared of now in the future of letting her down and maybe uh, she'll think differently of me um, at some point in some way. And, and that became so present uh, through that work. And then I, my new primary question was how do I appreciate the love and the acknowledgement in the moment and still look to add as much value as I can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that that's what I'm hearing once again um, in, in, in your discovery in this ecosystem and, and the, this family is that, and the beauty is everyone wants each other to share who they are and their greatness. And there's always going to be uh, judgment and there's always going to be uh, everything that, um, you know, we shared people um, trying to bring you down and, but think about all of those, those people and uh, all that impact that you're not having when you don't tell people who you are and what you could do, especially when you've given them the gift this back to the influence um, section, given them the gift of listening and they've shared with you uh, their pain, their suffering. And if you know that you can help them and you don't tell them what you can do and they don't understand your pedigree, your background, you know, your accomplishments, then they may not ever know and never be able to um, solve that challenge. So I think that's another critical piece of this is that, you know, you need to speak into the listening and into the pain when you know you have that ability. And that's the soup. That's why integrity based human influence, we, we call it a superpower because what's on the other side of that. Yes. When you share who you are, um, can change lives, not just to the person you're speaking to, but collaterally, Uh, the impact goes generationally, you know? So um, when I think of you, uh, Patricia, I think about your message and again, what you represent in the world and how much uh, that you can do, not just now, but for generations to come. And, And this opportunity today you having the microphone, uh, you know, it, it, with this group uh, is just the beginning. So I am grateful for you always. And I, by the way, I want to just say one more acknowledgement. You are on fire in the chat always. You know, one of the things we had a conversation with an internal team the other day was that we're not as present in the chat because when you're with Sean, you always got to be ready to go. And, you know, we're not always reading and responding. And man, you just nonstop, you know, there for people, always in support, always adding value. Um, just, just thank you. Thank you for that. Always. Thank you. Thank you for that acknowledgement. I have to acknowledge you, Adam, because just you in speaking on this subject, your presence is one that is so profoundly warm. Like you start to speak and it automatically engulfs an individual in like a welcome, safe space and presence. 
that when wherever you take me as the listener from there, I feel like I'm sitting in a hug with you. Like every single time in which you speak, that is what it feels like. And then for you to actually go from that space to truly seeing, hearing, understanding the individuals that you were talking to, leaning then from that space in regards to process mastery, the ways that you do because of how you've mastered the sales arena and how you lean into influence mastery, the world needs your voice. Like the world needs your presence because Sales today has been a very yucky place, <laughs> has truly been a place where the disconnection is one in which I personally am always like backing out of being a part of. But when I speak to you, when I speak to Fernando, since you two function similarly, that when it comes to you and how you engage and interact on anything pertaining to helping individuals advance their worlds, and their lives. Thank you for how you show up in this space and how you're changing this space to actually let people know they matter and that what you are offering is about advancing who they are and where they are. Thank you for that. Well, thank you. And that is absolutely received. Uh, and again, thanks to Date With Destiny. I will truly just um, accept and, and feel uh, gratitude for that. And, I, and I'll share uh, the reason that I'm here is that Capitol Grill dinner. Uh, the amount of people that I believe I've been able to impact since then is because of the moment when I heard Sean first speak about integrity-based human influence and about it being, we're starting with unconditional love for all people. And I, I will never forget the moment when I was able to uh, think about what I've been around my entire life in 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 you know, call centers and the sales environment and just the language alone, you know, the hooking, pitching, closing, the zero sum game, the you win, I lose, I win, you lose, sell or be sold, negotiating to take more, convincing, all of that language, um, you know, never resonated with me. And when I first, again, heard Sean share um, the uh, define what what this this uh, integrity based human influence was i knew in that moment that day that it was very very different and that it would end up changing my life and 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 changing the world so uh mm -hmm. I, I just feel that it is my duty now to you know share this and I'm so grateful to be a part of the plaque community um you know with without that opportunity without seeing sean on stage that day and talking about Platt, I wouldn't be here. And just uh, so, so grateful to be able to, to be here today and to share. And thank you for, for that acknowledgement. Absolutely. I wanna make one more highlight, which is you speaking about your primary question and what is transition to. Number one, I have to say, Joan, your primary question is changing the game for me. <laughs> Like I wrote down your primary question and I'm going, okay, time to upgrade, level up <laughs> in this space and what that is. So I thank you for sharing. My original primary question was how do I love, um, how do I love even more, right? And when I looked at that question, like my coaches were like, that presupposes you don't like truly love like what's the deal you know with that and I'm like I'm loving all the time I'm giving all the time and they're like yeah well like wh what else could that question be how can it how can it evolve to a better question and <clears throat> now the question is how do I appreciate and enjoy the way I love even more right so it puts me in a position of one being the first to acknowledge and enjoy what I give and how I give it, and then just scale. And so now it's just a matter of pouring it out in abundance. And I really, really, that's why I really love Joan's question, right? Because it, it puts me in the position of, ooh, there's another little tweak here, right? In, in regards to that, like for me, what that love is, I'm naturally that, I'm naturally flowing in that, but what does it mean to actually flow in the space of resourcefulness 
and giving that out in abundance changes the game. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Compounding effect of Joan Greco. I mean, it is just, well, even today, she's been sending some messages. Thank you, Joan, on, you know, uh, my energy and, and uh, just how I've been uh, today. And it just, it can't, I can't be more grateful uh, to, to her. And again, this community across the board. So uh, just, Indeed. it's a really, really special, special uh, day for me as well. Uh, Patricia, so mm -hmm. yes. And I'm actually going to use uh, Joan's question again to, to do a little tweak on my question, but the timing is absolutely spectacular because for those of you who actually you do know because both Sean and um, Adam have stated it, that I'm an executive at the Walt Disney Company. And this week I have a meeting with the president of our consumer products um, group. And with that meeting, it's, it's a meet and greet that she set up with me. And I'm thinking, well, how far do we take this conversation? But now I'm adding the, the resourcefulness into that space and looking at it from, hmm, how is it that I can provide a greater service to her in regards to resourcefulness in her space and her area? in her linkage with me in that moment and paying it forward. So th there's a lot of little pieces here that have uh, upscaled for me and what I will look like in that, in that connection. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it's numbers, right? Even when you think about uh, when Siri was talking about Scott's product uh, and, and you know, how she wishes that everyone with cancer can, be able to use it and it's just being in front of more people right and having the ability to share with more people on that as how we're gonna you know have that greater impact and sean we uh you put us together on purpose i know <laughs> this this topic we both looks like you know so we, it is wonderful to hear patricia's voice yes. I yanked my uh, ear thing out uh, <laughs> hi sean Technical okay. difficulties, but we're good to go. Yes. Patricia, how are you? I am very well. Thank you so very much for today and all of the beautiful gifts that you have given us with every single plat and lion that has spoken, because I have taken tons of notes and it's upgraded my life already. Thank you. And Patricia, you upgrade my life. Uh, I've had the privilege of uh, spending time at the beach house in the very ocean that uh, <laughs> jumped into this morning. And your leadership, your influence, all of it. And, and you talk about just beautiful ecosystem merging. Um, you know, Patricia, thank you because you had me in to speak at Disney multiple times and to have and beautiful feedback, you know, thank you for that. But just to add to your heroic unique identity, hey, I spoke at Disney to hundreds of leaders and had this type of, of feedback from them. It's just awesome. That, that statement allows me to talk to any major corporation in the world. So you did that and I'm immensely grateful for it. It is my pleasure and I'm hoping to do it again with this conversation. So, I mean, this conversation this week. So we'll see what happens. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you uh, mm. a ton. Is there anything, Patricia, we're going to move on to the seven levers in a moment. Is there any final, final on the superpower of influence overall that you would like to say in uh, pause on? That when it comes to the superpower of influence, if you are not truly grounded in your self mastery, then you can't fully master influence mastery. And so it's truly about taking the time to pause, understanding your why as you're always highlighting, uh, leaning into the space of your empowering beliefs, minimizing the thought of limiting beliefs, and when it comes to just laying out that foundation for yourself, that puts you in the powerful state of being able to do influence mastery because then you're not sitting in the thought of what you have to say next in the conversation. You're focused more on what the other individual has to say and how you best acknowledge and validate what it is that's being said. So I love everything that you share today and how you've shared it. So I thank you. Thank you. And fun, um, well, fun, interesting, final, final point. You know, 
I was chatting uh, as I just took a restroom break real quick. Mm -hmm. with, um, uh, Stephanie Bella. Did you eat a meatball or about, no? I did not eat a meatball. Okay. <laughs> I did not, I'm going to wait till we're done to, okay. to have some meeting. Um, I am present to the fact that Rob Gill is watching the end of the Pittsburgh Steeler game is not, <laughs> I am present to that as well. So that's a different conversation for a different day. But um, I, we were chatting about that there was some, uh, and this is beautiful. There's no defensive response. I just want to actually give a syntax and influence point, you know, coming into today from earlier. So there's like the idea of like, hey, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, guys, not a lot of women in the beginning stage of all this. And I'm, I'm sure we could have like sequenced a couple of things better with introductions and more broadly. Um, but I want, please everybody understand this piece, the, the most um, powerful numbers drive uh, HUI. So an, an important early beginning of today was to have folks realize that there was like something impactful present and so the most uh, upfront, impactful examples were numbers, Chris, Rob, Fred, like those numbers, those dynamics, millions and hundreds of like, there's like very impactful numbers present. Um, the richness though, so if, if we, in, in my experience and estimation, if we start with part depth of mastery conversation, like let's say that we began today with this conversation with you, Patricia, and mm -hmm. all of your amazingness and the, the micro distinctions of influence and conscious leadership, and we hadn't demonstrated and unfolded some of the power of numbers and the reality of like what's possible and present, I think that may not create the same glue for the day. You know, so I'm not saying that's a perfect analysis, but hopefully everybody will see from here, you know, the richness of the power of the women in Platt and all the, the things that we've been doing since Beck, Siri, Joan, all that, that um, that was an intentional sequencing of how we did it uh, to create the most like boom, like this is what's happening here, this going on. So I don't know any thoughts from you on it, Patricia. It's funny when you said it, a couple of things flowed through me. One is your highlight of arduous momentum abundance. And for some reason, it flowed in the space for me in looking at arduous, the work that is done, the foundation that is laid out, what does it take, what type of energy, what type of focus, what type of framework and connection. Then you have momentum where you, you leaned into Siri and that space of, all right, you're, you're doing the things. And so from doing the things, how do you lean into that space greater in order to create abundance? And then here in this abundance space is more of what is it the mindset that you have in this space? Like what is, how is it that you're flowing when it comes to being connected, working through your spaces the way that you want to and allowing that magnetic energetic flow and how do you connect to the nature of people in a greater way? So that, that's what I'm hearing. What Patricia said. That is <laughs> you are uh, truly extraordinary. Um, immensely grateful for you. And uh, just as a quick primer, for, we're going to go about a uh, little less than two hours more. Uh, I think we will be complete in this, this back foundational principles. Patricia, we're about to step into the seven levers and mm. you're quite familiar with our work and the things. How would you uh, prime the listening of the amazing folks who are about what we're about to step into in those seven levers as we explain and articulate leakage and the things. Mm. There are when you're looking for the practical steps of how to lean into your business differently, like we all have habits, we all have the things that we've done to get us to where we are now. When you're looking for how to lean differently in order to scale quickly in your business, then you want to hear the details of what Sean is about to say. You wanna make sure you're listening in for the distinctions because every lever that he speaks to is literally that lever. It's a pull down that draws up value. It draws up results. It draws up sales. So just pay attention in the distinctions of what you need to take out of this 
it's not so much about trying to grab everything here. It's about grabbing what is come, what is being highlighted to you because that's the next marker for your next increase. That specific thing. Let's hear for Patricia yeah. Morse, ladies and gentlemen. Love you, Patricia. Yeah. Ah, love you too. Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay, so here we go. Foundational principle number six and seven happening together. And here's where we start to check for leakage. You can keep rolling me, brother. Yeah, I'll stay as long awesome. as you need me to, awesome. of course. Okay. So, woo! Okay, for all of us- As long as you're not gonna embarrass me, no, just kidding. I will try not to embarrass you. Yeah. So the, uh, the dynamic of hardest thing to do in business, assemble an audience of your ideal avatar. We mentioned it in the foundational concepts. Hardest thing to do in business, assemble an audience of your ideal avatar. For Rob Gill to assemble hundreds of people in a room like Chris Crohn did or over a thousand, hard to do. Rob, in fact, right? In fact, just recently, Rob did a beautiful event. They sent out letters, mailers, things, invested in something. I think there was like 14 people in the room. It's hard to assemble an audience. But what Rob is amazing at is uh, in, with that audience of unpacking the value, of unblinding people to the value present. So how do we assemble an audience then? If it's hard, what do you do? So that's a concept we're about to step in, or we've touched and we're about to step into right now. In addition to that, in addition to that, we said that the whole process of process mastery, because this is what we're in, the what to do, the how do you do it, is rooted in this. So if the hardest thing to do in business is assemble an audience of your ideal avatar, and all business is built on relationship, and all relationship is built on shared experience. All business built on relationship. All relationship built on shared experience. Then the fundamental question is, how do you create a shared experience for your ideal avatar that is the most integrous, the most integrous and most efficient in, times of, in, in terms of what you spend in money, time, and energy? That's what the seven levers are all about. New distinction there. Yes, sir, brother. What's your distinction? Integris. Adding Integris. In the shared, in the shared yes. experience. In the shared experience. It makes Integris. total sense. You yeah. need to be adding more value to the people that are coming and invited to your shared experience. Then. Awesome, brother. Yes. Let's go. Okay, so the seven levers aren't disconnected. They are piping. They are the mechanism from... Point A to the end. So I will say them quick, quickly. And we have a slide up. Yes, Tank? Yeah. Awesome. So one, ecosystem merging leads to speaking engagements. Speaking engagements lead to lever three, sales meetings, lead to lever four, sales lead to lever five, disposable income, lead to lever six, contributions. Hi, Siri and Beck from today. Lead to lever seven, fun and magic. Please do not see lever seven as we only have fun and magic when we've concluded. The fun and magic wraps around the whole system. So if you see like one through seven, that seven should wrap back around everything from one through six. Fun and magic present for all of it. But of course, sometimes a little bit easier to have fun and magic when we have our beautiful disposable income and contributions, our money, time, and magic where we want those things to be. So this is, again, 100 hours of content. So we are not going to spend 100 hours in lever six and seven this will be about a 45 minute section. I super recommend just move yourself, like shake yourself, move yourself. There. there you go, like let's go. Deep breath, the learning, the listening present, because here is where it all leaks. We could have, we could go through DWD and you could go be like, yes, 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 I love you, Adam. Let's go, brother. We're gonna F and crush it, all this stuff. Woo! Ah! Right. Thank you, Tank. I love it. <laughs> right? And then we can have the greatest level of influence. And we're awesome with people. And what's happening, brother? Love you. That's yes. Right. Yes, it's all over the place. But if we're not sure what to do with that energy, that love, that passion, Tony first. I remember 
like one of my favorite things from the original personal power CDs from Tony was hearing what Tony said, if you're running, I think, I think this is a Jim Rowan quote, actually, through Tony. If you're running east, looking for a sunset, Adam Gugino, you have a problem, right? So we have all this energy, all the ready to go, massive level of influence. I'm wonderful people. People love me, all of it. But if we don't have the ecosystem merging, the speaking, the sales meetings, the sales, we get to level five, disposable income, and we don't have it or have as much as we want. So let's go. An ecosystem. We defined it earlier today. And the ecosystem is an organized group of people with a leader. We said earlier, maven, connector, salesperson. Let's dive into that for, for a second. A maven is an expert. A maven is an authority. Of, it's a person who, if they say it's great, it is great. Their word is gold for what is. Consumer reports was that at one point, like TripAdvisor might be perceived to be that way. Like the rating of a hotel, if there's enough, a thousand reviews, we take that as truth of what the thing is. So Maven, huge. Uh, somebody wins an Oscar, uh, an Emmy. These are Maven. These are, these are things that someone decides this is what it is. So the Oscars, the Emmys, these are their Mavens, their Maven organizations that brand something as something. Okay, a maven has that authority, that voice. A maven could be um, somebody who does a study on something and their word is what it is. So maven. Connector is the person, do you ever have a person who's like, I got a guy, I got a woman, I got a person. I got a, you know this part. Like, they're putting people together like crazy. Those are connectors. Salespeople are people of influence that have the incredible ability to go from hello to yes. Now, by the way, people could be part of all of these or two of the three, but the reason they matter is because they lead larger ecosystems. They lead or connect to larger ecosystems. So if you look at the world as maven, connector, salesperson, and then you look at everyone else, one maven, connector, or salesperson could be more valuable to know in your business than 100,000 people that are not Mavens, Connectors, and salespeople individually. Not can be, is. Because the people who are not Mavens, Connectors, and salespeople, they lead no one. And they are one client at a time if they fit your client base, right? The Maven, Connector, salespeople, they are the people leading the ecosystems and controlling the influence. Does that make sense, Adam? Absolutely you? makes okay. sense. So if you're thinking of ecosystem merging, then who do you want to ecosystem merge with? I am going to, this is like so phenomenally awesome of do's and don'ts that are coming up right now. Please be taking notes, exclusively dropping in the chat. Don't just copy the chat notes, write your own notes and read the chat notes because this is the death of people's dreams in plat to every random networking function people come in. There is so much massive leakage, hemorrhaging, uh, like just loss right here. Oh man, Adam, you know, I'm a, I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor from Nebraska, you know, and uh, you're a lawyer from um, South Florida. I just, I just, love hanging out with you you know we we got to create we got to like just hang out and just um uh, we got to figure out a business to like do together because you're awesome and we should we should create like we should create a tuesday morning mastermind group between you know you and me and five other people in unrelated professions from different states and what we should just talk about is how much we love each other and how much we need to do business together for like the next year. I know of many groups like that. I'm not criticizing. Please note, I am not criticizing. If people want to get together and they want to make friends, they want to hang out and they want to like talk about life and vision and business, that is absolutely awesome. What I am attempting to create a disruption around though is thinking that that's a good idea to accelerate your business. It is not. It is not. 
So what is a great idea to accelerate your business is to find Maven's connectors and salespeople and find, or if you're gonna, by the way, if you're gonna have that group, make sure that group is taking a snapshot of the seven levers. And that's what you're gonna talk about every day. Not talk about your values, you're moving towards values, you're moving away from values, unless you have all the money and time you want, you're looking for magic. Great. If you don't have all the money and time you want, not the way to run the group. What you're looking for are people that can help you and you help them create relationships with ideal avatars and ecosystem leaders of ideal avatars. And we could play this game for the next five weeks, but it is vital we do not leave this point. Uh, everything from today was a waste of your time if we do not get this next half an hour segment to land powerfully. A half an hour left from here. Land powerfully. Leakage is everywhere without this piece. And if I were to challenge everybody here with this question, how many ecosystem mergers do you have? One changed my life in 1997. I created, I, I read Tony's work. I started studying Jay Abraham's work. I got a promotional. I got, I got some pitch thing from Tony and Jay Abraham selling me some book for 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Could you believe that? I bought these tapes and you know, Tony and Jay sent me some pitch letter about this Mr. X thing. And I don't know about like they were fighting and they're going to create like somebody stole somebody's IP. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of just all this sales garbage, you know, and oh, wait, that's what my mom said. And then I bought a book because I had just graduated from law school and the mail came to her house and uh, I bought I bought that book for 500 bucks. And I talked to Jay Abraham about that book um, after I met him. We had a bunch of conversations about it, actually. And it was a book that changed my life because it taught me the, the beginning of understanding what we're talking about right now. And what it taught me was that trying to be famous in the world is a heavy lift. Like, I don't want to be famous, but I want to create impact. But if you create preeminence, identity, fame, notoriety, the acceptance, the acceptance of your heroic, unique identity within a smaller grouping, that's a lot easier and it changes, it can change your life forever. So it's 1997. I quit my job at a major law firm. I'm broke. I didn't understand marketing or selling at all. I thought marketing and selling was the worst, the most disgusting thing you could do. I'm out of law school for six months. I quit my job. Everybody thought I was crazy. I start my own law firm on a credit card and I am dying. I'm going to random networking functions. I am desperate. I am scared. My family thought I was nuts for quitting my job at $100,000 in debt, started my own law firm on my credit card. Some of you heard me say that before. Some of you haven't. So forgive me if it's repetitive for you. Started my own law for my credit card, scared out of my mind, going to random networking events. And I will never forget walking around like thinking people are just going to give me business. So I can appreciate if somebody joins Platt and it's like walking around, like, what do I do now? And, you know, uh, I don't know, like, you know, Scott Harris said all this stuff, you know, Sean, this guy, blind lawyer guy stood up there and said like, do you model Tony Robbins or whatever? Like, do that, like, this is free. Like, they lied. Nothing's, nothing's happening. It's exactly how I felt the first time I walked into a random networking event. And I got in my car and felt like quitting everything. I had no money. I literally thought something was going to magically happen to me. And I didn't understand these distinctions yet. And I was desperate, despondent, brokenhearted, all the things. But then I began to understand the path, different words I used back then, but ecosystem merging, 
the, the, the ecosystem being, again, an organized group of people that self-identify. So let me just make that super clear. An ecosystem is an organized group of people led by a Maven connector and or salesperson, a Maven connector and or salesperson. It's an organized group of people. And it's often led by, by the way, a Maven connector and a salesperson. There's studies that show that uh, most organized groups of people, this is some of Malcolm Gladwell's work, are led by five or less people. Like five or less people uh, control ecosystems. An ecosystem is an organized group of people that self-identify. So Platinum Partners, we're an ecosystem. We identify, yeah, I'm a plat. We have hats, we have shirts, like, right? You're, you're, you have an ecosystem. You self-identify as part of your own ecosystem as a human, right? Those people around you, it's like the ecosystem of Patricia, right? Um, so an ecosystem could be, I'm a Pittsburgh Steeler fan. Ecosystem Whoa. could be, congratulations, Rob Gill. Woo, Pittsburgh Woo. Steelers win. So um, an ecosystem could be um, Chris Crone's YouTube channel is an ecosystem. Uh, yeah, I'm a subscriber to Chris Crone. An ecosystem uh, could be a lion. I'm a lion. I'm like a part of the sub ecosystem platinum partnership. Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, professional sports teams, Grateful Dead fans, all ecosystems. Uh, citizen of North America, however you self-identify, it's an ecosystem, right? So the question becomes, what are the ecosystems of your, made up of your ideal avatar? So 1997, I'm struggling, I'm scared, all the things. I, I read this $500 book, which people think I'm nuts to have bought. And I begin to understand that your mark, like the intentionality of becoming preeminent and adding massive value inside of an ecosystem is how you get your message heard because this is the seven levers of marketing and sales process mastery. The way we use those words are very, very different. Marketing is everything you do to create a sales meeting. Everything you do, which we contain at lever one and two, ecosystem merging and speaking. Those are broad categories, which we'll define a little bit tighter in a moment. So marketing is everything you do to create a sales meeting. On the other hand, a sales meeting is where you could sit down, talk virtually, click a button on the computer and buy something. A sale, as we use the word, is exchange of money for product or service, done. Nothing else is a sales meeting. So when Rob Gill, we talk about Rob Gill going from eight to hundreds, we're talking about the ability to say yes or no to do the thing, right? Okay. So we are looking for how do you create the greatest efficiency to build a relationship with people that are your ideal clients? So 1997, I start to understand this stuff. I'm like, all right, this is, this is making sense to me. So there's, I'm in my like own little networking group and nobody has any money. Nobody has, so nobody has any HUI of real value. Nobody has any money. Nobody has any relationship capital of any real value, but I have some skills and I have been studying influence already working on it. And by the way, my influencing skills do not come because I went to law school. Please get rid of that concept. I did not learn anything about influence from any class I took in law school, period, zero. I learned all the stuff and influence from 50,000 other sources, but definitely not that, okay? So to be crystal clear. So I start to think like, who's my ideal client? And I'm like, okay, somebody with money, somebody that um, I could do services for, but I was 27 years old, six months out of law school, my own law firm. So I thought about, I have to have somebody who's more open-minded so my chiropractors, that sounds good. I had a few other ideas. One was um, uh, police officers for doing their wills. I'm like, I don't want to do wills. What, it just wasn't exciting, interesting, passionate about. So chiropractors, I'm like, what, what's the problem they have? Well, they fight with insurance companies for reimbursement. I'm like, okay. So insurance companies reimbursement, great. I'm like, all right, that makes complete sense. So um, hmm, I got a chiropractor in my networking group. Hey, are you part of any group of chiropractors? Because I realized I didn't want to be one chiropractor. I want to meet lots of chiropractors and serve them with value. So I said, okay. He's like, well, there's this thing called the Northern New Jersey Chiropractic Society. I'm like, okay, Northern New Jersey Chiropractic Society. <clears throat> like, do you know the person who books speakers? He's like, uh, I, I think I actually do. 
to great. I will not belabor the story. Five meetings, all kinds of conversations, a couple months. They say, yes, they bring me in as a speaker. So my desire, I told them going in, was to merge ecosystems. I used a slightly different language. We're not training on the language right now. We're training the concept. And I, I said, I would love to come in. I didn't say I'd love to come in and speak. I identified their problems. I was an integrist and influence. I identified their problems. I opened listening. So I created emotional rapport at step one. Step two, I identified their pain. This is stuff from the slide from earlier that we didn't cover in any depth because we don't have time today. But then I conveyed my uh, identity, uh, which was as a speaker, a person of energy influence. And then uh, the agreement I made was, let me please come in and speak. And don't ever have me back if it doesn't work out. So I created a talk called, uh, a speech talk called How to Make a Fortune, I'm sorry, that you're at war and you don't even know it. You are at war and you don't even know it. So I go out and I deliver, you're at war and you don't even know it. We went incredibly successfully. We have beautiful group influence dynamics, group influence different than individual influence, longer story for a different day. And I get clients. They then tell me, because it went so well, they want me to talk in front of the entire state chiropractic society. It was game over. I went from broke on my credit card to buying the beach house that I slept in last night. Uh, well, not with Chris Crowen. I slept in in my beach house and Chris Crowen slept there too uh, with the team. That was the house I had. And I bought it in a year and had no money. I made millions of dollars. It was absolutely unbelievable what that did that one ecosystem and what it did. And you heard stories earlier today about Fred and us coming together. That one ecosystem, seven figures, it's getting millions. The ecosystem of Rob Gill and I, the ecosystem of what I've created with the Tony world, speaking on the stage, talking to people at Platt, all the things, the world of then Chris Crone, Rob Gill, and you heard Chris saying ambitiously, um, $100 million valuation uh, by the end of 2020. Two, um, I'm like, okay, 50 million, but for an act of God, there's no way it's not going to be 25 million, right? In value. And it was absolutely astounding. One ecosystem merger, well, two, Rob with me and us with Chris. That was it to create those kinds of uh, accelerations or accelerants. So when you think about ecosystem merging, what is not, when we start teaching this, I've been teaching this principle for a long time. We first started teaching this principle through Unblinded and running you know, our programs. What people were saying like, oh, I'm, I'm ecosystem merging with you. Yeah, I had a meeting with Adam. I was like, hey, Adam, how are you? Okay, we're ecosystem merged. An ecosystem merger is a real agreement. Like I'll do this, you'll do that. It doesn't have to be a written legal contract, but it's not saying hello and having a conversation. It's not because you're in a joint mastermind. You're not ecosystem merged if you're in a mastermind or a co-creation group or a collaboration conversation. That is not ecosystem merged. Ecosystem merged is, okay, we're going to go to Chris's event. Rob's going to speak on stage there. I'm going to edify Chris. Uh, Rob, Rob's going to edify me, Chris. And then people are going to get a proposal to have a review of where they are financially. And when that review is done, people can fill out forms, da da, da. And then all of a sudden there's 150 uh, forms filled out. That is an ecosystem merger. Then there's a variety of different types of ecosystem mergers, because as I said before, I am very clear that I have an ecosystem merger with the Tony world. It's not in writing. It's not for, there's not an exchange of dollars, right? But my, my role in an ecosystem merger is that when called upon, which is, uh, has been quite often, 14 times, I go up on stage, I make truth happen. I make truth happen. And it's measured by friction, how much friction there is in the relationship. Yes, absolutely. So ego, thank you, Adam. So e your, the quality of your ecosystem merger is also measured by friction. So there is friction. I don't jump up on that stage and say, okay, I'm selling Cal U Law. I'm selling Unblinded. I'm selling Epic. I'm selling Fit to Exit. I don't do that there, right? I don't do that. So what I do is though valuable because it does raise my HUI and with breaking sales records on stage and dot, 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 or in those processes that I've been on stage, there's massive value conveyed. That is an ecosystem merger. So you don't, you're exchanging value 
is the pre the foundational piece of what an ecosystem merger is. You're exchanging value, and there's a there's intentionality about it. So I want to distinguish that from random networking. Hey, let's go to like a random networking event. Why? I and if you this is very very powerful. We're about to share, and maybe a little disruptive. But I would say this, if you're not going to an event for social purposes and you're not going to, if you're going to an event for social purposes, of course, good. If you're going to an event to learn, of course, good. Social, great. Learning, great. If you're going to randomly network, never go again. Never go again. My principle has been, I will not go to an event unless what, Adam? You're speaking. I'm speaking. I ain't going. I ain't speaking. I ain't going. I didn't decide that last week, and it's not out of significance. It's out of time efficiency. It's out of intentionality. I am not going to randomly network. I graduated from random networking in 1997 when I was no longer the president of my BNI chapter because I graduated into being preeminent in the space of the Northern New Jersey and then State Chiropractic Society then laterally merged ecosystems with the Hospital Association in New Jersey, the State Medical Society in New Jersey, the Neurosurgeon Society of New Jersey, uh, the actually the um, Plastic Surgery Society in New Jersey, and the Hand Surgery Society in New Jersey, all places we started speaking and doing all the things for all these years. P.S., that little $500 book, that throwaway book, that, or that book that everybody funded me for buying for 500 bucks, um, we've collected $500 million dollars. $500 million on behalf of medical providers. None of that happens. None of this exists if I don't buy that book. Well, one more. I know yeah. they're asking the question, the distinction between referrals and ecosystem merging. Thank you. Referrals. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So phenomenal distinction. Referral relationships are a high friction, low quality, high friction, low quality version of an ecosystem merger. High friction, low quality. Nice, but this is what, imagine, imagine this. Hey, Rob Gill. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm calling out Rob in the back of the class because he's talking. So <laughs> Rob Gill, um, I have a great idea. Uh, hey, hey, Rob, yes. you want to come in? Sure. Come on in. So Yep. So we're seven lever training. So Rob Gill, what is, what is the highest number of referrals that you have received from a random referral relationship in a year where it's like, Hey, I, I really like you, Rob. I like you too. Referral source. What's the most referrals you've received in a year? And that's like the most, probably like five okay. or 10, I'd say, and something like that. Five or 10. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right. With no intentionality. Like, no, yeah. yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Thank you. Referral source. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how many, how many mm -hmm. referrals? <laughs> um, well, actually, yeah. so when I started putting you on stage, our original ecosystem mergers, Rob's going on stage at practice mastery events and uh, we're assembling rooms of 20 practices ish. Right. Yep. How many, uh, you, and your sales meetings jumped from eight to 25? Is yes, 25, 35, cre crept into like 40-ish. Yeah, okay, the, 25, right. 35, right? And those were high quality avatars client-wise, right? Absolutely. Okay. Beautiful. And, and there was still no structure to it other than I was on stage, you edified me, and then we collect the names of, you know. Yeah, so eight, 25. So let's go, it went up 17 a month. So that would mean that's creating hundreds, 17 times 12 is 170. Times, so about 200 yeah. instead of five to 10. Yeah. Do you get the distinction, Adam? Absolutely. Chat, everybody out there, you get that difference. Watch this just for fun. How many, how many <laughs> uh, referrals, uh, the ability to communicate with human beings was Chris talking about creating for Epic in 2022? beautifully but yet tumultuously in our stomach 20 to forty thousand. i'm sorry okay no no i said yeah i said how many how many people was chris Curran talking about uh referring over to epic i i thought you said 20 to forty thousand. that's what he said but, but but in a random referral relationship we might get five to ten yes and if we go to a random networking event 
we might pick up one client. 20,000 was his low number too. Like that's his yeah. I failed number. Yeah, 20,000 was the I failed number. So um, here's the deal. Do you now understand why I would profess that we don't want to go to random networking functions? Because you used to go to random networking I functions. I did. That's actually, a, yes, that's how I met you. Well, you met me. You you weren't my, random, but right. I went there randomly. Yeah, as yeah. a random networking You function. were doing your thing. Yeah, I was going there to teach, yeah. but probably who invited you taught you it was yeah. random networking. Which was part of the Calgary results formula. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That so, brought me there, but I didn't know it. Yeah, this is back in 2017. Yes, September. So, but the distinction is five to 10, uh, if a referral relationship gets created, and we want to turn those referral relationships into our ecosystem mergers with no friction, mm. which we'll explain in a second, with no friction. And that's what we're co-creating in lots of places. Part of our meeting yesterday was about that. Yes. So, yeah. Yep. So um, the... It was actually really because I just heard Adam say something. And I just want to throw this out yeah. there. Um, ecosystem is measured in friction. And yesterday, that's what the meeting was about cleaning all the different things up and how to take the ecosystem and whatever the current friction is, eliminate that yeah. three years into what we built yeah. on, on every side of it. You know what I mean? Like that, that was what was amazing about to me yesterday. And yeah. I was, you know, I, I was thinking of that when you said that when I was on the couch, right. just awesome you know, job, really man. excited about the Steelers. Congratulations on your Steelers. <laughs> yes. Rob Gill, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Okay. So um, that's the distinction between referrals and ecosystem merging. But now here's the question for most people. For most people, we, we get this far into the conversation. This is an area of mastery to be developed, trained, let, all the things, right? But fundamentally, there's a the two ecosystem merge. There's a step 0.5. And that step 0.5 is what, Adam, did you know? Shared experience. Shared experience. Because remember, we said, what is the shared experience? that is efficient, integrous, assembly and audience of your ideal avatar, where Rob and I met originally was a shared experience that we were running called Practice Mastery. I wasn't selling any training, any coaching, any anything. I was building my law firm and we're generating millions and millions of dollars. You know, this was, that one division was an eight figure division that I was a business owner and operator of, over that spent very little time in. And in that beautiful, incredible, wonderful division, it looked this, it wasn't, it wasn't convention centers and owning our own building. And it wasn't, I, I never spent a dollar on advertising, by the way, that ever returned anything in my life, right? That's not an area of my expertise. So in, in what we did, it was all this simple. Hey, uh, Mark, that was one of our partners. Hey, Mark, so who do you want to meet? You're a marketing a person for doctors? Oh my God. So you want to meet doctors and the doctors you want to meet, you want to meet orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons, chiropractors, right? So do we. That's amazing. And oh, you know, Brian, that's cool. Brian owns an interoperative monitoring company that monitors people during neurosurgery. Wait a minute. So he wants to meet neurosurgeons. We want to meet neurosurgeons and other surgeons. And you want to meet surgeons? This is like, we should get married. But first, let's have a date. Let's pick a date and test. Pick a date and test. So we picked a date and test. But actually, let me back up. Before I met Mark and Brian, I met Mo, Larry, and Curly, right? Hmm. And Mo, Larry, and Curly, um, when we picked a date and did a test, we said each of us will bring five practices, five, five, and five. <clears throat> and those people brought a grand total of zero. I brought five. We did it with Mark and Brian. Brian brought five practices. Mark, the first time the brother brought like 21 practices. Wow. It was unbelievable. The test, he got a 100 with extra credit, got 130 on a hundred point test. He me too. <clears throat> and he brought Rob Gill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, yes, which we should. I was, which I was not a practice. And I was pissed that you were there. Yeah. That's the truth. Yep. So, right. I was like, I was, I was like, why is, why is, this why is Mark Bayonne? bringing this, this, Bayonne. this, this Bayonne guy who's a financial person? That's not the deal. I mean, <laughs> but he brought a whole bunch of other people. So it was cool. Um, but yeah, passed the test. 
So <clears throat> our step 0.5 is shared experience into ecosystem merger, shared experience into ecosystem merger. And here's the vital critical piece to understand. If I were to speak to every one of you, right, and, and maybe not some of you, but the majority of you, maybe the vast majority of you do not have a regularly scheduled shared experience to assemble an audience of your ideal avatars. Right there, drop the mic. If you change that on Monday, everything changes. And what I would highly recommend is to find other people in Platt that want to meet the same people you do. Not generally in the world, but in, if you're a geographically specific business and your geography. If you're not, then cool. But find the people who are aligned in Platt or outside of Platt that want to generate relationship with the exact same people. And P.S., I'm, I'm, I'm saying this factually. You didn't pay for today. If you do what we're saying and you create ecosystem merge with people outside of Platt, then Platt paid for itself for life. Because of Tony, you're here. This information, you do this. Pat, Platt paid for itself for life if you never ecosystem merge with a single person in Platt. Does that make sense? That makes absolute sense. I yep. mean, thank you. This day, you just demonstrated, gave an example of how this day could literally have had Platt pay for itself for life. Absolutely. So what is a shared experience? A shared experience is running into the ocean and jumping into the ocean that's 47 degrees with Chris Crone. A shared experience, that is a shared experience. A shared experience is watching a Steeler game with Rob Gill, and you want to be there if they win. You don't want to be there if they don't win, right? A shared experience is going to a Starbucks for a cup of coffee. A shared experience is us jumping out of airplanes together. A shared experience is us skiing together, us going to a plot event together, us hugging and saying hello. Don't ski with Rob Gill. In Irish X, it's all over the place. A shared experience is anything you do, right? with another human being to develop the relationship. So you, and we're not getting a whole long story in this. That's why we created the real raw to create a shared experience between people who come together to do stuff. It it's free. I'm not promoting the real raw. That's what we do every day because my old shared experience used to be bringing people to Capitol grill. Yep. We were the number one. I was the number one client. You could happily fact check this. 20, uh, before COVID, 2018 and 2019, I was the number one client at Capitol Grill in Paramus, New Jersey, which was, they told me, this is hard for me to believe, but they told me it was the most successful Capitol Grill in America. I don't want to be more successful than one in Manhattan, but that's what they said. And uh, we were the number one client because all the time I ran shared experience at Capitol Grill, including that's where Adam and I spent four yes. hours and didn't even order our food. And we ordered it. But watch this distinction. You made it earlier. Yep. Because now I'm thinking through the prism of integrous shared experience through value exchange, adding value and being efficient for your money, your time, your energy. The Capitol Grill is adding value to people. Of course, they get a great meal and they're meeting people they want to meet, other yeah. things, but it's very expensive and time yeah. consuming. Yeah. A cup of coffee, although not very expensive, you're adding no value to that other person. Maybe you have something great to talk about, or, but right. at the end of the day, there's really no adding of value to, to have somebody go meet you for a cup of coffee. Absolutely. So it, what is the integrous value, as Adam Gugino so beautifully just articulated, of the shared experience you're running? But first, start running a shared experience. By the way, a podcast is a shared experience. Do not ever, unless you have a massive audience already, do not ever have one person on your podcast. It's, 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 a way, it's a mathematical error. Have three people. Then you get to meet more people. Think everything, team. Think everything about numbers. Your investment of time and energy. And PS, if you're having one person on the podcast at a time, they're not meeting anybody else. Would you rather go on a podcast by yourself or three people? If ego and significance might tell you by yourself, but if you're thinking mathematically, you'd rather meet the host and two more people. I certainly would, yeah. right? So in every situation, the question is fundamentally, what is the shared experience that you are running with whom to ecosystem merge? 
So now watch this, okay? So like these aren't gobbly, uh, gobbly good words. We used to, so I would have a dinner at the Capitol Grill. Rob? Yes. Um, quiet on the set. <laughs> I would have dinner at the Capitol Grill and I would have people that would meet there, but there were massive friction points. One was they had a drive to the Capitol Grill mm -hmm. in North Jersey. Rob used to drive an hour and a half, right? right? It's yeah. a lot. Said so used to used to have to drive an hour and a half to come to the Capitol Grill. Yes. What was also super present was it cost, as Adam said, money. We would often have it. I mean, it wasn't the biggest deal in the world, but you know, if you're going there twice a week and it's a two thousand dollar bill, two thousand, all of a sudden we're dropping four thousand dollars a week, yes. and we would run an event with fifty or sixty people there, and you know that's eight or ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is a meaningful investment, right? Do you know what beats the Capitol Grill by a lot? The shared experience of the real raw that we do every day. So, and this is not like now we're promoting real raw. We're telling, just giving an example of a shared experience. So we now run, now th think of this, everyone, mm. okay? Do you think I am foolish, and make stupid decisions regularly and continuously in business. I definitely make stupid decisions. That wasn't a question. <laughs> Is it regularly and continuously? You do not make stupid de stu stupid decisions, and maybe I'm going to jump ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. The way you set up the real raw on on how you're on it every day is world class, out of control, insane, and better than any podcast. The way you present it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yes. And so, but here's the key. Let's just take it compared to a Capital Grill dinner and then we'll go back to that. Capital, yeah. yeah. Because first of all, it doesn't take four hours. Plus not everyone's from yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. And this is not about the real world. This is an example yeah. of how to think about shared experience because you could, a shared experience could be you take somebody to a baseball game. Yep. A shared experience could be you're playing video games virtually together. So yep. this, is, this is just have a shared experience. You've got ideal avatars. So when we do this, we bring people on. Actually, so let me say this first. So we've we've concluded that I would not be doing things. Foolishly. I got even a, a more crazier comparison, real quick, if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Just back to this. That shared experience, or being on national news, as another example. So oh, throw that yes. in in the mix. Nicole Maiello. Yeah. All right. Just come in real quick. If you don't mind. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's up, Paul? Yeah. I love you. What's up, Paul? You see? Paul, love you, Paul. My yes. Love so, you, Paul. Yes. So, how how many times have I been on national news? Um, yeah. maybe three. Yeah. Maybe more. Three or four. But yeah. that's um inconsistent with the amount of times that you have asked to be on national news. How often could I be on national? Every damn day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why don't I do that? Um, it's not the most optimal zone action for you yeah. in growing the business yeah. and hitting that problem. So here, zone action. So here's my coaching. Don't randomly network and don't go on national news, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and here's why. Because going on national news, you're there to make a, a comment, a sound bite, a something. And once you've done it, just I want, this is the power of these distinctions. Once you've done it, you're welcome. You have the HUI value. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> you have the HUI value. Done. Heroic unique identity can say, yes, I've been on national news multiple times. Done. It's a statement. It's in the bio. It's in the thing. But it doesn't continue to rise your relationship capital because the people watching it are not necessarily your ideal audience. You're like, wait a minute. There's tons of people watching. Okay. And so you're on for three minutes. Your name flashes under the thing. You're not presenting who and what you are. There's limited value. And I have a, a mutual friend, dear friend of ours. My accountant um, is an extraordinary human being. And he's all the time like, you've got, why are you doing all this stuff that you're, this, I don't get this real raw thing. And I don't get what you're doing. Like you could be on the news all the time, right? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely. And he's brilliant, amazing. He brilliant. We love him. Absolutely brilliant. Yep. Dan is amazing. Yep. But my question for him is, you're, he has a beautiful vision of contribution, wants to save Tibet, wrote an amazing book and just awesome dude, great account, amazing, right? So but I'm like, like, what is this doing to advance your mission that you've been on national news 500 times? Mm -hmm. Like you had enough at like 10. Is it 
unless you want your own TV show, I don't know why you're still doing this. Like, unless you love it, like if it's magic for you, of course it's great. But if it's to build your business, it's objectively incorrect, yeah. right? And so, yeah, thank you, Tink. It's here for Tink. So, so final, final on this key point, I, I go on the real raw, a shared experience now, 10 times a week. That's a lot of time. And P.S., I am financially free. I don't have to work, right? I, I say that humbly. I'm here for magic. So the reason for that is because we are assembling an audience of our ideal avatar. And by the way, in our management structures, tightening to make sure that we actually have the most optimal audience of ideal avatar. But watch this, right? Just watch this distinction. So let's say we want to build the, you want to build your mission. And you walk into a random networking room and you meet some people and they might be able to help you. And the lie of random networking is, oh, well, I met so-and-so one time and it was amazing and a great thing happened. Well, okay. But would you, because you found 25 cents on the ground in New York City, does that mean you're going to spend your entire day randomly hoping to find money on the street in New York City? I don't think so, right? So that's random networking. What ecosystem, what shared experience creation to create ecosystem merging looks like is this, right? Hey, uh, we want to meet corporate counsel. Just watch the magic of this statement. Watch the magic. One, we want to meet corporate counsel. That's a really good thing for our real laws, okay? Okay. Because corporate counsel attracts a lot of our other ideal avatars, right? Other lawyers, accountants, financial people, they, they work in businesses, entrepreneurs. This is good stuff. And our other, our other ideal avatars want to meet corporate counsel. So law firms are good for us. Law firms want to meet in-house corporate counsel for businesses because those corporate counsel people can refer the law firm's work. So if we look at, look at shared experiences in anchor A, we have corporate counsel is attracting anchor B. So these people are super easy to get to say yes, because we're giving them a massive and unbelievable gift that they should actually be paying for, right? Gift. So anchor A, corporate counsel, anchor B, business litigator, anchor C, or people like the amazing Rob Gill. Nobody's like Rob, but people who claim to be in the same business as Rob. Financial services, insurance, et cetera, as well as accountants. So once you have the first anchor person for the shared experience, everybody else just wants to show up because they want to meet the other people. And now you have magic. So, okay, great. So, so you should... Then, of course, if you want corporate counsel to get to law firms, to get to accounting and financial, right, and all anchor together. So B anchors to A, C anchors to B. So then, of course, of course, you'd want to just invite all these corporate counsel people on to call companies, right? Wrong. Wrong, sir. Wrong, ma'am. Wrong. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You get nothing. Oh. Because, because. We want people who are mavens, connectors, and salespeople that control access to the entire ecosystem. What is happening back there, team? We need quiet on the set. Thank you. So what is happening is we want ecosystem leaders that influence corporate counsel, right? What ecosystem leaders. So. Instead, this just happened this week, right? We called up a, an organization of corporate counsel, in-house counsel, that is 40,000 members. So who did we call? Did we call the um, president? No. Who would you call? Hmm. Who would want to take the phone call? Adam, who would want to take that phone call? A salesperson? A salesperson, a 
a salesperson work for the 40,000 person organization of corporate counsel? Yeah, of course. They have salespeople that, that do what? Sell their, their uh, association. Yes. <laughs> Woo. So he comes on the real raw and we have an amazing shared experience, like a great date. Right. And he falls in deep like, maybe even the beginnings of love and says, what, Adam? Tell uh, these five things. Yeah, and says, this was so incredible that I need to bring my boss onto this show so that we can have 40,000 of our members also come on the show because it would be extremely valuable for them to participate. Yeah. And I want to make this, my proposal to my boss is to make this a member benefit. Yes of this organization. And here's what it's not. Oh yeah, man, we got him. Woo. No, no, it's, it's integrous <laughs> because they want to give more member benefits. Mm -hmm. So this becomes a member benefit. They win. This gentleman has a massive monthly obligation, agreement, requirement, some of that quota of number of corporate counsel to go from hello to yes with we become an amazing source for him of member benefit, keeping members and even having new potential members yeah. come on and us working together to bring on members and have him come on and meet people and the match. So that's awesome with them. That's awesome for us because that becomes the anchor person that anchors person B, C, and D like gold. If this ecosystem merger occurs, Every single real raw is filled like that at like virtually no cost. And in fact, I think we could then just begin charging people to come on the real raw. It becomes that easy. I don't know if we'll do that, but we could because we're giving so much value, but maybe we won't. And we'll just allow everybody else to come on. That is the difference. Now compare what you just heard less than half an hour. Compare that to random networking and referrals. Are we kidding? Think of it. And oh, Tony Robbins. Well, Tony doesn't talk or do this. Oh, really? Hmm. Oh, really? So who does Tony Robbins ecosystem merge with? He has people called FSRs, field service representatives that fill events. So Tony, has people go out and do speaking engagements. That's lever two. Ecosystem merge, we're gonna come in, we're gonna add value and then deliver the speaking engagement. And massive acceleration happens because people are presented to, these discussions happen, and then they go into sales meetings and sales, which I'll come to in just a second. We're gonna be very short treatment of those, those points. So everybody, Facebook, who did Facebook ecosystem merge with? Everybody. Everybody. They ecosystem merge with the world, all of the people continuously that go on Facebook. They became, who did Google merge with, Adam? All people and business. Everything. All people and business. Who did Amazon ecosystem merge with? All businesses. All no. businesses. We'll get your stuff there faster. So ecosystem merging doesn't come, doesn't begin though. We didn't call up the corporate council people and say, hey, how are you? Heck, um, we'd like to add a member benefit for you guys. Um, then it becomes your salesman. It's a sales call. Instead, we invited people onto our show. So the shared experience is how you begin the ecosystem merger conversation. The shared experience is how you begin the ecosystem merger conversation or the client conversation. Ecosystem merger or client conversation. We didn't, Rob Gill did not call up Chris Crone and say, hey, Chris, I'd like to do this thing. Instead, Rob met Chris after I had shared experiences with Chris, um, you know, hanging out in the hot tub, me, him, his wife, my son, all of us hanging out at our house. We ordered Ruth Chris. We, I went to Chris's house and had lunch uh, with his family. All of these shared experiences built, 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 built. And then we have a, a larger shared experience called come speak at my event. And after I come speak at his event, we do an event together called Legendary Mastermind. We have a shared experience with all kinds of other people. Then from that shared experience, 
Rob, Rob gives that one, at that shared experience, meets Chris through speaking on stage there and the phone conversation right before that. Then they have the shared experience called Dinner That Night, which was an ecosystem merger dinner. Ecosystem merger is agreed to. Takeaway points. If you're not running a shared experience to generate client sales meetings and ecosystem mergers, then today was the most valuable day of forever. You have something? Uh, yeah, I do. Please, go. Um, yes to everything, how it all situated to where we started the business, just like when you started with Adam. The real magic, though, and I, and, and I want to share this with everybody because if they're fortunate enough to really kind of get this and start with people, is how the, because people come and go after you start something. Yeah. How do you build out the relationship after that? Yes. How do you maintain, like, because the excitement's there and, and, and there could be good financial success early. And this is how you right? do that You pick a date, like, these, nothing happens. There's no ecosystem merger. Do this unless there's a date yep. and a test. And then as Rob is saying, after the date and test, if and that works, yep. then it's how you maintain the things. So yes. Like jumping in the, but Chris and I, Rob, Rob knew, like there was friction about a variety of yep. silly little things that happen to hurt people's feelings. You know, like we can violate each other's rule structures and well, I didn't know what you meant, yep. create stories and right. So we, All of us. we had a dynamic like that existing. Yes. You knew, because yep. we joked about it. And I'm just going to one quick point. He's like, yeah, you, you're gonna, Chris is going to go to your hat, like we get all this worked out and then you're going to jump in the ocean. That's what happened. Well, no, I said, yeah, yes. And, and because the jump in the ocean is a shared experience to cement the relationship. Yes. It's like something or fun. Or re-cement. Or re-cement. Yeah, re yeah. re cement Because Chris and I, we talked about it this morning, we're leaving the beach saying that we will never forget ever doing this. Mm. Like, he's like, I've never been on a beach in the snow before. I never. So we had a unique shared experience. We ran into the water cemented on video, but we didn't just do that to like, you know, listen, it creates HUI, it creates some thoughts, some attention, put that aside. Yeah. We did that to have a shared experience to deepen and re-cement our relationship. Was your, your, your ritual. With him. My your, ritual. Your connection that you guys have. That we have. before Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, your, yeah. 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 Chris and I body surfed yeah. at many places and we body surfed at Tony Robbins' house. Tony's, by the way, the, the beach break at Tony's house is phenomenal. It's beautiful body surfing, uh, not in the summer, only in the winter. So when the last event was at his house and it was in the summer, I didn't realize that there's no real wave break in Florida often during the summer, but that's why I'm happy it's in April. It was in March the first time. So I'm having this time, it's going to be a great wave break. Just having some fun and joking about that, but serious also. So yes, ritual for us. And then walking off the beach, we were just talking about it. The money train. Yeah, and talk the money train is present yep. but talking and being present that's what maintaining and growing the ecosystem merger looks like the key operative word though is what is the shared experience that begins it and continues it yes yeah. yes that's all i'm proud right. and, awesome. and adam has done that successfully in the space with you at, and, and i'm blinded as you've got, gone through those you know you're growing pains that come with growing but being able to kind of keep building it out and that's yeah. what triggered that with us so yeah. i just wanted to share that with everybody out there because it's important to know it's not just getting it going, but surviving and advancing. Yeah, awesome. And I just one more example, um, yeah. because it's it's we're in the moment and it's sharing to just exemplify, right? The shared experience of the videos that were created for this shared experience, Marja as an example. Yeah. yeah, Marja as an example was on one of the you know 10 videos that we've done. Um, and interactive with incredible people. That video was created. That was went out to her ecosystem, and now here we are on this shared experience. And I'm going to bring Marja up. Yeah, so let's just, talk about that in a moment. I just want cool. to, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to cement that. So quickly though, what is it? Why? Okay, so ecosystem merger. Again, this is not the full treatment. This is get a shared experience going. That your ideal partner with someone that wants them or two people partner with two people that want to assemble the same audience of ideal avatar that you do have a shared experience with those people that are your ideal ecosystem partners and your ideal avatar, uh, I'm sorry, your ideal client avatar. So ultimate ecosystem avatar, client avatar, and you're in a completely different stratosphere, C crazy different world. People though, don't do this. So to do it, take action, link massive pain to it, all the things we talk much more about it. If that's not happening, 
there's such a beautiful opportunity for you to just like grab this and have massive acceleration and having plat pay for itself for life. Number one. Number two, second lever. So shared experiences, lever 0.5 into the ecosystem merger, clear agreement, what you're doing, intentionality. It's not random networking. It's not, uh, oh, we're collaborating. It's not, oh, we're, we're thinking about something. None of that. It's pick a date, test, go. Assemble an audience, it's, it's skill, audience assembly, all the things. Money, who's going to put the money in, who's paying for the dinner capital grill, or who's paying for the this or that, and who wh whose HUI is what, who's assembling the audience. Bring five, five, and five, ecosystem merger. Now, the speaking engagement itself, we're not getting into any of these dynamics. You know, we're, we're, we're not time today, obviously. But the second lever, when you hear us say, me say, share, speaking engagement, we don't just mean speaking on a stage like Tony does. We don't just mean speaking today virtually like we are. We mean anything that gets your message to the ecosystem. It could be a blast email. It could be... Um, a text, a, a speaking engagement could be a list of people you can make phone calls to. So when we use that second lever, speaking engagement, it means any communication whatsoever, right? But what the ecosystem merger does at lever one into lever two is it gives you the access to those people. So if we create the, eco with, with Chris Krohn, the ecosystem merger is speak on our stage, people fill stuff out. The ecosystem merger is, here's a list of leads. With us having Rob come speak, ecosystem merger is access to stage and having people, same thing with Chris, make decisions and you know, say yes or no. Uh, with, with Rob and I practice masteries, come speak on the stage, edification, ecosystem merger. So that's the speaking engagement component. Do not see just as speaking, but this is where Adam's point about friction becomes very present. It's like how often you can communicate with their ecosystem. What can you say? What can't you say? Where is the friction? So an ecosystem merger is, is enhanced or diluted by how little or much friction you have to communicate with the people, mm -hmm. right? So now that's all we have to say about speaking engagement. We're not doing speaking training today at all. So that lever, this is an influence training, right? In, in this piece, this is about the concept of ecosystem merger equals accents to getting message to audience. The third lever is, how many sales meetings does that create? So the speaking engagement is designed to create a call to action to do stuff or just to raise your HUI. So the first time I ever went on Chris's stage, I didn't have a call to action. I just went out there to add value, build our relationship. It was a shared experience between us. It rose my HUI. That's it. There's no call to action. Your HUI and your relationship capital. HUI and relationship capital. There's no call to action. This is, this is give HUI rise, right? Massive value added. But if we were you, if we were um, in, in the seven lever specifically, going to lever three, we would then have a call to action, say, do blank, right? And listen, but and this is what you should be doing in integrity. And that would drive a certain number of sales meetings to come from this day, right? That would generate into sales meetings. And then that's lever three. So one of the things that most people do not count or number of sales meetings, whether it's for you or your sales team. And the counting of sales meetings is extraordinary, but if you wanna count something, make sure you're counting speaking engagements and ecosystem mergers by your salespeople, because that's what generates sales meetings. And that's why I love sharing how many sales meetings we've created through Epic and Rob and um, FitX and Unblinded, all, all the things that we're doing in these different directions, because that's the number that creates the fourth lever. And we're not in influence. Remember, we're not training on what to do in a sales meeting. We're giving you the, what drives what. So speak, ecosystem, shared experiences in step 0.5 create ecosystem mergers. Ecosystem mergers create speaking engagement step two, at lever two, excuse me. That drives sales meetings at lever three and sales meetings at lever three drive sales. You cannot have a sale with a sales meeting. You cannot have a sales meeting without some version of speaking engagement. By the way, speaking engagements could even include advertising. Google, pay-per-click, those are speaking engagements. They have a much higher cost. Every speaking engagement has a cost money, time, or energy, money, time, and or energy. So you want to reduce the friction as much, much as possible to create the speaking engagement. The cost for Rob of all those speaking engagements was equity, right? That was part of the cost. So there was a cost to it. It was worthwhile. He'd have to write checks for it, but the investment, right? Was money, time, energy, money, equity, 
by equity is money was a part of the cost. So the ecosystem merger has some version of exchange, some version of exchange in money, time, or energy for the access to that audience base. With Google, I'm sorry, with Facebook, to ecosystem merge with them, right? You're on it for free, but to get access to your ideal avatars through the Facebook tools, you pay them money for it. That's what you do. Google, you pay them money for it, or you earn it through organic by giving them what they want, which is more content, great content, then you earn it organically, which is what Rob is doing in his social media dynamics right now. Chris has been unbelievable, creating millions of views. So Chris has merged ecosystems with YouTube. He gives YouTube what it wants. It gives him what he wants, organic uh, reach. One of the concerns you have to have though, it's not frictionless because Chris doesn't own his YouTube channel. YouTube does. Super valuable, super amazing, but there would be a very big problem if Chris lost his YouTube channel and if he lost his TikTok, big, big challenges, right? We don't own those things. Uh, we are ecosystem merged with those platforms and they maintain the absolute control. There's loads to talk about in all of this that we're not getting into, but we're just illustrating the concept that we need to be present to the ecosystem mergers drive speaking engagements, speaking engagements drive sales meetings, sales meetings drive sales, which of course drives lever five for all of us if we want more money, which is disposable income, because you don't get to more disposable income without sales at lever four. So you're, and, and I only treated, watch how fast went through lever three, four, five, because lever three, four, five are all about our influence mastery during the conversation. <clears throat> the structure at step 0.5 shared experience, ecosystem merger step one, speak engagement step two, those pieces, those are the ones most people are horrifically underperforming at. Most people are pretty, because people are like, oh, so you train people to have sales meetings. No, no, absolutely no. That's like a micro fraction of what we teach. If I taught Rob how to have sales meetings, he would just be converting more than his eight sales meetings, but the brother's got 900 sales meetings because we're teaching people how to think this way and create this through influence mastery, process mastery, self-mastery. Drop the mic right now. Drop the mother effing mic because when Chris Crohn's like, oh, so you're a sales trainer, I'm like, no, I'm not a sales trainer. Like, yes, I could train people on selling, influence all the things, but I'm training people how to use this to grow exponentially, to grow exponentially because foundational principle number seven tank is what it is the idea that when you generate it you own it yes yes Ooh. so foundational principle number seven we'll go back and forth not lever seven but foundational principle seven we'll go back and forth between six and seven for a moment here foundational principle seven is when you own the generation of business then you own your future I own the ability to generate work for Calgary Law, all these different dynamics. Because of that, I own the firm. And that's how I built it, had people doing the work and the services. When we own that, create that, do that, either there's two things. Because we're so great at generating, or if you're like Tony, right? You have such, or Oprah, you have such a master skill set in speaking, presenting, all the things such a master skill set that people want to hear you. So then you own the thing as well. So either you have to have the master insane off the chart skill set. And the reason that there's 80,000 certified coaches that graduated from my coaching school and, and the average income for coaches in America is not just like, for example, for coaches in America, like $56,000, that includes people employed as coaches, and that people who identify themselves as coaches, that does not include all the people that got certified as coach that wanted to be a full-time coach and generate their income and can't make any money doing it. So if my, I don't have the, the, the um, I don't have a study on this. My gut tells me the average certified coach in America, and I, there's enormous, uh, hundreds of thousands, the average certified coach in America, my hallucination is, makes less than $10,000 a year on average. If you throw out the top hundred, like Tony Robbins and us and I'm like, like Jay, Jay Abraham, throw out like the top 100. After the top 100, my hallucination is that the average coach makes under $10,000. Uh, how about this? 
take out everybody making over $300,000 coaching, throw those people, like move those people over there. The rest under 10,000 on average from actual generation of coaching clients. Why? Because they're not masterful in their skill enough to be like Tony or Oprah to have people come forward and they don't do what we just described. They randomly network, they talk to their friends, they don't ecosystem merge, they don't have shared experiences, ecosystem merger, speaking engagement, sales meeting sales. Drop the mic. Adam, you have talked to tons of coaches, tons of lawyers. Oh, by the way, do you think what I just said relatively applies for lawyers also? They're on salary, but that they most generate like virtually no business. It applies to mostly everyone. I would say that Tell those 95 percent of the people will say this this line. Once you get me in front of them, oh my God, they always say yes. Or once you, you know, if I could just speak to them, um, my business would be incredibly successful. I mean, and that is even people who are already very successful will still yeah. share that. What people don't fundamentally understand, this is our responsibility in 2022, is that that's what we do. Teach, train, coach, lead on is that piece. So I mean, we certainly train on how to have people say yes once you're in front of them because a lot of coaches struggle mightily. Lawyers don't struggle as much in a sales meeting at step three or lever three. Coaches struggle mightily. Well, lever imagine three. the people that are struggling in both of those areas. Yeah, and coaches in one, yeah, yeah, percentage. yeah. And lots of people are struggling at that third lever, right? And that's infinitely uh, helpable with the superpower of influence. But people are, I mean- so why Rob Gill is the perfect example. Rob is a person of like, he's awesome going from below to yes. He's awesome at influence. You're going to like Rob, you're going to have a conversation with Rob, but why do you have eight sales meetings a month? Because he had no shared experiences. He had no ecosystem mergers and he had no speaking engagements. Now the brother, because he's merging ecosystems with the social media platform, thinks he's famous. Mm. And he's like hanging out and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not showing up anywhere. Like whatever. I'm saying that in like good fun energy because he's brilliantly graduating. He's graduating because of ecosystem mergers and speaking engagements away from a lot of activity. And that's what we get to do. And that's what we're talking about a foundational principle number seven is when you're generating the business in that way, you graduate from doing things you don't want to do. But the challenge is you graduate from doing things you don't want to do but most people never have the shared experience of 0.5, the ecosystem merger and speaking to graduate away from doing it and having other folks in the team do those activities. You just defined once again, scale and moving into time freedom. Yes, that is scale and moving into time freedom. Please say that again. You just started, you defined graduating into scaling your business and gaining more time freedom through leverage. Absolutely. But I said a lot, Here's this simple. Are you running shared experiences and how often? We're running them twice a day, minimum, twice a day, minimum. And then we've already planned 10, uh, yeah, 10 events for this year. And I am 10 events for the year. I will run personally. And we have lots of other ones for the company, right? We're scaling, building, right? Lots of other ones. But I will personally run 500 real raws this year. I will personally speak at 10 of our full-time events. I will personally, and, and I'm personally flipping out with the team regularly. I'm exaggerating, but deep confront of booking us to speak eight times a month inside of ideal speaking engagements on top of the other 510 speaking engagements I just told you about. So when Tony talks about he spoke three times a, um, a day uh, for a year, 750 speaking engagements, my goal for this year is to do more than that. That is my outcome. When he was like rising and building and growing, because why? Lesson number one of today, foundational principle number one, Adam, is what? Well, not the levers, but what was the, the start of today? Who do we model? Tony, uh, model Tony. Model Tony Robbins. That's why. So if you're modeling Tony Robbins, you're running shared experiences, your ecosystem merging, and you're speaking. If you're not, you're not, not, you're not modeling Tony. And if you leave one ingredient out, if you like make a cake and you leave out the uh, water, I don't think you have cake anymore. It only takes leaving out one ingredient. And by the way, 
Shared experience and ecosystem merging and speaking is not one ingredient. That's like saying you're going to make a cake with water by itself. It's water. It's not cake. So love everybody. It's water. It's not cake. And that's not said in like criticism. It's said in desperation that that lands fully because if that's the thing you take away from today, you've changed your life money, time, and magic forever. You may have all the money and time in the world. You're like, I want to be a coach. I want to be a trainer. I want to be a speaker. And yeah, I have all the money. I have the time. I'm amazing. Okay. Well, I don't get it. I, I'm a great speaker. I'm a great speaker. Okay. But are you assembling your own audience? Because Tony's a great speaker. And the guy assembles his own audience all the time. His own events, his own room. Tony's not running around speaking at other people's events. Tony's like, a little bit, a little bit. He's running his own events, got his own world. How do we model that? Eco shared experience, ecosystem merging, speaking. Shoop, boom, drop the mic. So, final, final on this the, before we bring Marge up. Yeah, the amount of times, again, like you said, that I hear, I am a great speaker. I am a great you know, coach. I'm a great communicator. Yeah, Adam, Adam, just, just like, let me work with them blind. Let me coach people. We don't need coaches. We don't need speakers. We need ecosystem partners that can co-create and fill events. Yes. If you, can, if you can have the discipline to run shared experience and invite uh, ideal avatars, you control your money, time, and magic. 99.9% .9 of people will not do that. And they'll try to pay Facebook for it. They'll try to pay Google for it. They'll try to do all the things and it's not working for them. This is the drop the mic that is loads to talk about. Tons of content inside of like how to teach, train, master this, but that's the piece and the point. Now, and that flows into the rest of the levers. Remember, our disposable income, that's when we have the money. Then we can give money like, hey, I'll buy four horses for my children. I can only do that because I do shared experience, I ecosystem merge, I do speaking engagements, I have sales meetings, I have sales, I have disposable income. So I could then contribute and have this deep heart-centered moment with Beck and Siri today, unplanned, randomly, and just say 20 grand, here you go. Like, I'm, I'm not Bill Gates, right? I'm, I'm not Bill Gates. There's plenty of people in Platt with I'm more money than me. The buildup of, of cash only has not been my ultimate goal. I do have money. I have a lot of money. I'm way above uh, the average you know, in both Platt and Lions. I'm very confident of that, but I'm sure there's a, a number of people. I mean, the Sentners were here. They sold a company for $900 million. I didn't sell a company for $900 million, but I have the money to do magical, beautiful things lots and often and consistent with people and to give it away more than seven figures in the last three years because- of this formula that we are just describing right now. And after contributions is fun and magic. Which that created fun and magic without a sales meeting, right? So there's- Created fun and magic without a sales meeting, yeah. right? Beautiful. So now let's jump in with Marja for a minute because she was a beautiful ecosystem partner that helped make today um, happen in a success. And then we're gonna move on to foundational principle number eight. What's that? Got it. This way? Thank you. Okay. Let's do it. Do we have Marja? Yes, hello. Hello, Marja, how are you? Outstanding, outstanding. This has oh. been a fantastic day. Thank you. How well can you hear me with that up there? Is it like a lot different? Oh, it's, it's that, better. That's better. Here's, okay. So first, thank you. Um, thank you for being an ecosystem partner. Thank you for being magical. Thank you for helping me write my book. Thank you for being a, a person of genius and wisdom and for being truly amazing. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving um, us the tool space and opportunity to expand on our amazingness. So thank you. So tell me before we get into ecosystem merging in the, in the yeah. beautiful, we had a mini ecosystem merger around this event, but tell me. Uh, please, what you're taking away and what's become the most available for you. I'm not looking for a compliment. I'm genuinely curious as we work together, we do beautiful things together. Tell me, please, what has become more present, more available for you. And it could be, you know what, Sean, absolutely nothing. Um, it was just really um, bringing forth, I, I want to implement this or that. But anything new and or anything that's not new that really became clear that I must do this for you. 
Yeah, well, first of all, the fact that I have one, two, three, four, six pages of notes, um, and that's at halftime taking notes, um, <laughs> obviously it's something that's impacting. The first impact that was major for me was when Chris said um, that he has these 40 things um, from each event and he implemented in 30 days. And I don't have 40 things and I don't think I want to have 40 things, but I know in each Tony event that I attend, I have a list of things I want to implement. And that impacted me because I'm like, ah, time. I forgot to add a time limit to it. And that's why so many of them are still open. And um, so that was a huge um, step forward for me um, in saying implement what uh, my list of what my takeaways from each Tony event within the 30 days. Um, and a lot of it is um, will accelerate just everything that you've been teaching here today. Awesome. And so for you, shared experience, ecosystem merging, speaking, what is present? It's everything. Um, uh, in my in my business, for example, people keep asking me, "Oh, you know, where are you finding customers?" And I'm like, "I'm not finding customers. They're finding me. I'm just in the space with them and serving and being present with them. And and uh, we are having these shared experiences, like all of the um, Tony Robbins events, the Unblinded events, other." Uh, ecosystems that I'm a part of. And it's a beautiful, integrous way to, to grow and serve each other. I have so many plat partners that I work with that, that help me to grow in what they do. And, and it's just wonderful. Awesome. So quick thought for you um, is <clears throat> you do something that requires a very uh, meaningful level of skill, right? So this isn't, you're not a widget maker, nothing wrong with that, but your ability to create duplication is slightly more complex than for most. Um, is that a fair statement or not a fair statement? Um, I think it's something that is teachable. Uh, a lot of the duplication is, I think, something we're all capable of. Um, even just in, it's a, it's a different kind of, I guess, level five listening would be uh, part of it. Like, for example, I saw in the chat that people were like, oh, I need the notes. Oh, I have the notes. I need the notes. Can you email them? Can you send them to me? And I was, oh, why don't we just have a group for that? And I made a group for WhatsApp and said, everybody jump in there, share the notes there, boom, it's done. And so it's- Arjun it's created an ecosystem merger <laughs> and made herself the preeminent leader, mm -hmm. which is absolutely integrous by adding value to people in the group, ingenious and wonderful Marsha. Oh, thank you. Thanks. But it was, and all it was is just paying attention to see what everybody was needing and what everybody had and bringing that together. Yeah. And so um, thought, so when I was saying before that what you're doing is a little more challenging to duplicate, you know, we do super high end. One of the things that I do in the variety of businesses I have is super high-end litigation. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for me to find an attorney to do medical revenue recovery, right? Uh, or for, for Calgary law, than it is to find a litigation attorney um, at a super high level. And, you know, it took me a long time to develop Michael. And that's one of the conversations Michael and I have. So there's different friction points and duplication. So what I was, was referring to is if you're duplication process is really smooth right now. That's awesome. I won't get into whether it is or not, but there's really two choices for you because you're on fire and beautiful things are happening. Mm -hmm. And you might say, well, I can't really grow that much because I can't take on too much work and I can't source too much work because if I do, then I'm you know, going to outpace my ability to deliver because of duplication. But what you can do, so maybe it's that, maybe it's not, but if not, then I would absolutely be making sure you're doing shared experiences, you're creating speaking engagements that are generating uh, more and more massive numbers of people to step into and do the work with you. On the contrary, if you're like, well, no, I can't do that because I would get overwhelmed and have too much, then what I would do if I were you is I would cre still create the speaking engagements and shared experiences and generate tons and tons and tons of clients 
And then you have the privilege of doing what Tony did, which is taking his coaching fees, which I'm sure at some point in his life were 300 bucks an hour, maybe 100 bucks an hour. I never asked that question. I would like to ask that question at some point. But now they're a million bucks a year. And mm-hmm. I think that results in about eight hours of coaching per year. So they sit somewhere around uh, $125,000 per hour. So what you, Marja, would have the beautiful privilege of doing is saying, great, I'll help you write your book. And if it's X today, you can make that 2X in three months. Now, maybe mm-hmm. you don't want to do that, but um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do it if you're creating massive value and that's beautiful. So you can either grow your duplication base mm-hmm. and keep pricing the same, right? In the beginning, even for somebody else, lower the pricing a little bit to then rise integrously, or you could keep generating clients, 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 and have more and more choice and more and more choice and raise the prices. So your thoughts, and that's, I'm, I'm just illustrating yes. right now, the power of, of shared experience, ecosystem merging, speaking, that leads into sales, beating sales, disposable income, right? And how we can see it from through the two different prisms of this foundational principle number seven, which is if you own the ability to generate the business, which is what happens through the, the seven levers at foundational principle number six. So if you own the ability to generate the business through foundational principle number six, then in foundational principle number seven, you could do what we just talked about, create rise in price, right? Uh, somebody like Jay Abraham has never built a, a scaled delivery business, you know? but Jay created a massive increase in his price structure, right? Or you can generate this or do both. Tony's done both. So Tony has a massive, and, and by the way, can we have some fun? So at the seven, we're gonna talk about leakage in a second and find the leakage and foundational principles as we move to eight, through eight, nine, 10. Many, some of you may have heard the story a bunch of times. Some of you may never heard the story, but it's, it is worth noting whether we've heard it or not. Tony Robbins tells the story of building his coaching business and looking at it. And I'm going to, I'm going to make this up and somebody can fact uh, correct my, my timeline. Cause I'm not sure of this, but I feel like it was like 10 years ago or less that this was the case. And if, if somebody remembers the story better and it was a different time period, it wasn't more than 15 years ago. And I think it was like 10 ish might've been eight to eight, eight to 10. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, if you've heard the story. So Tony had his coaching business and it was doing a lot of revenue, you know, eight figures of revenue. And the business was $165,000 profitable, but then they, so $165,000 profitable. And this is Tony Robbins like 10 years ago. And and he tells a story at the end at Business Mastery. He then went back and looked at it further and he was actually losing money because they hadn't allocated certain expenses correctly. So he's losing money on his coaching business. Within, it was either one or two years by effectively closing all the leakages, which if these are, this is not his language, it's our language, my language, Um, ecosystem merging, speaking, sales, meeting, sales, the, the, the scheduling of meetings, sales meetings, and the conversion of sales meetings and Tony took that business and RRI took that business from 18, I'm sorry, from $165,000 profitable and then reallocated to a, lo- a loss to $27 million gross, $18 million profit. And it was the same business with nothing else changing in terms of the front end of ecosystem mergers and, and speaking in a huge uh, new addition but simply closing the leakage from the speaking engagement step lever two into the lever three sales meeting and lever three to four sale. And so that's what's at stake. Marja, your thoughts. Um, I did the first thing that you, this the ladder that you mentioned um, in allowing the market to dictate my pricing and the demand and because my under my HUI, part of my HUI is that I want to capture the stories of the leaders in the world, and I want to rob the graveyard of all of those stories. Um, my next step is looking for increased duplication of what I'm doing. And so because it's not just about, um, you know, a higher price per client, it's about 
um, capturing all of these stories, capturing all of the wisdom, all of the knowledge, and bringing that out into the world. And I want to I want to create something that lives beyond me because this is bigger than just me. This is about impacting each other, impacting generations, and changing lives. Um, just like everything that we are learning, all of the people that taught Tony, we're still reading. We're still reading Jim Rowan. He's long gone. And so I want us to be that for this generation and for the next generations to come. And so duplication is, is massively important for me at this point. Amen. And so just focusing on what happened here, so many of the fine folks that made it here today, because there was other dynamics and are getting out other videos and things that occurred, you know, that's a a beautiful suboptimal friction dynamic uh, that occurred leading up to this beautiful day in the short window that we took to share this. But you did such an incredible job and this is a version of an ecosystem merger. So we love you and we're gonna talk to you and share about your amazingness today in, in the space of ecosystem merging, speaking, et cetera. But then you are, which we didn't even know, um, you're part of uh, tons of different WhatsApp groups and other uh, online worlds of subgroups of platinum partners, uh, right? And then mm -hmm. you distributed the video. So we created a video together. Yes. That's fun and awesome about a foundational principle uh, mm -hmm. that we'd be talking about today. And then you beautifully, thankfully shared all of that. But Marja, through your teaching today and intentionality, was that purely altruistic that had absolutely no benefit and value back to you? Or maybe was it something different? Um, it was both. First of all, I, it, it is, you know, what I do. I love seeing things of value and sharing it with um, other people that I love and care about. And it's something that I do habitually and naturally. So um, if I see something that's worthwhile sharing, I share it. And um, so that I can't, I can't even help myself from doing. Um, but the, the systematic way of making sure that I hit all of the groups was because, uh, yeah, you created the video with me. I was in it. I wanted to share that. I wanted to highlight that and share my experiences with the other people. Um, and, and I know what it is and the value that you bring. So I wanted to, to bring that value to other people that I know added value to my life. And that is all in Tegris. That's all in Tegris. Because at every level, you knew the value that was going to come. You knew beautifully you're in it. Your heart is, is, is pure about it. It doesn't make your heart impure if you're going to receive benefit from doing something. It makes it impure if you're taking more than you're giving. And it makes it impure if somebody says, hey, you're going to make a benefit from this in any way. And you say, absolutely not right? Like then it's impure. It's like, well, I guess because I'm in the video. So that's positive, right? So as long as we're transparent about any level of self-interest and we're giving more value than not, magic, integrity, all the beautiful things are happening. Your thoughts, Marja? I uh, just came to mind an episode of Friends where uh, Phoebe was trying to prove that there was a way to give selflessly um, without ever uh, getting anything in return. And the whole show was about that and she couldn't prove it. And no matter how much crazy stuff she did to try to give, she kept getting back and kept getting back. And I think what it is, is you just tap into a law of the universe. That's just how it is. How it is. So a number of years ago, and I don't talk about these things, I used to I used to do only anonymous giving, only anonymous giving at a time when I didn't want any more growth, money time. I was not looking for growth. I, I spent, my kids played a thousand games. I spent more than a decade of my life, as you know, Marja, many people here know, coaching every game, going to everything. So I wasn't looking to do that. And I was doing things anonymously. What shifted is I want to grow more. And I understand that part of our HUI is when we contribute. So I've made things more publicly known in the last four years. But I gave, uh, I read a, a newspaper article, somebody died, it was sad, a, a terrible situation, the family couldn't afford a funeral. So I sent a check for eight or $9,000 to pay for the funeral, whatever it was, totally anonymously. It still wasn't totally selfless though, mm -hmm. because it made me feel better yeah. to God, it made me feel better to myself, you know, right? So whenever we're doing something, to your point, it's very difficult, it's impossible, I believe, to have something be purely altruistic 
because the end of the day, if we even feel good about it or feel aligned with our higher power or our soul or our heart, there's still a level of self-interest involved. So to your point. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's everything right with that. Why shouldn't we feel good about serving each other and giving to each other? That's a beautiful thing. Amen. Amen. Um, Final, final fun fact, or my pre-final fun uh, fun fact is a an, an teaching point about mistaken assumptions things. Marja, can you, would you mind sharing what you came up to me and said at the Tony Robbins spiritual trip in the fall of 2020? Yeah, I shared it with a couple of people in the chat earlier. Um, when I first uh, saw Sean, I would wave at him and I um, go to talk to him and he'd look past me and he'd walk away. And, and I thought, well, that's kind of rude. What's going on here? And but then I said, I, I stepped back and I questioned my assumption. I said, well, maybe I'm wrong. What if I'm wrong here? Um, and I tried to figure out because I could see other people love this man. Uh, you know, uh, even Tony, that was the, the event where Tony was like this brother and put his hand on your chest. And I said, okay, I'm clearly missing something here <laughs> that, that I'm not seeing literally. And, and so instead of going into a fence, I, I, we pass each other in the doorway. And again, you were walking past me and I said, Sean, can I ask you a question? And I said, it really like, you said, yes, what's going on? And I said, uh, and I asked you, I said, so is this a technique or something that you're doing? You know, when I talk to you, you're looking past me, you're not looking at me. Are you, uh, you know, what is that? And I asked out of pure curiosity and wanting to learn versus uh, offense or anger. And you said, you said, don't you know? And I was like, no, what? You said, I'm blind. <laughs> I just was like, oh my God. <laughs> and it was the funniest thing. I like that event was just the like, funniest moment for me. I was like, oh my. And I cannot believe that um, I could have possibly missed connecting with such a beautiful soul uh, um, had I not just simply asked the question. Well, you did me the service by asking the question. So thank you because you coming into my life and finally getting um, book number one uh, on its way to completion uh, is of massive value. And I've been, I've been writing a book for two decades. So Marja, you're extraordinary um, to take that book away from the grave. This is an unbelievable human to talk to. And I'm massively grateful. Any final, final Marja? Before she has a final, final, I just wanted to add um, I'm so blessed because I, I, in the middle of all that, she came <clears> on a shared experience. She was on a real raw. Yeah. We got to have a, an incredible phone call and she, you know, told me about that moment and then said yes to being here. And I'm in, wow. I am yeah. once again, uh, that's why for me, it is, it is absolutely priceless to be doing what I'm doing. Oh, thank you so much. My final, final, thank you so much for that. I appreciate you guys so very much. Um, my final, final is, all I could say is say yes, do it, do it scared. Um, my first plat, like I shared it in the group, uh, when I said yes to plat, I was terrified. I just uh, signed up again. There's still this like <gasps> in my throat and I'm just like, you know what, this is happening. You know, when I said yes to um, unblinded, I was like, <gasps> okay, this is happening. And every time I go yes and lean into that um, and to push through the fear, I find an excitement and I find a love and I find a, a, another level of, um, of partnership, ecosystem merger of love, of knowledge, of experiences, of life. And so um, all of the only thing I'll leave you with is if you've been waiting to say yes to anything in your life because of fear, because of not knowing the how, uh, step through it and that will appear because that's been my experience. I still don't know how I played for, paid for my first year of flat and it was done. I'm just like, <laughs> one of the reasons I came here because I was hoping Sean could shed some light on it for me. I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> well, I hope that light has been shed and, and much more. So Marja, we love you. We are grateful for you and truly awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So quick question, Kyle uh, B-Rips and Peter Swain, are they in the building? I think they are. Um, yeah. Tink, we got, we got Peter, Kyle, Brian, and let's get those folks. Yep. Hello, hello. Hello, Sean. How are you? Is that Kyle, the one and only? 
It is I. Brother, thank you so much. Um, so Kyle Zagrodsky is uh, founder of OsteoStrong, partner of Tony Robbins, um, heart-centered, ingenious, beautiful, brilliant leader in all the ways. And somebody I have a phone call to from yesterday. We didn't finish. I apologize, brother. I will look and hope to reconnect by tonight or tomorrow at the latest. It's been uh, quite the intense weekend, as you probably picked up from uh, today. But I'm so looking forward to finishing our conversation, number one. Um, number two, Kyle, to, to create 160 plus franchises requires an extraordinary execution of shared experiences, speaking engagements, uh, I'm just sorry, shared experiences, ecosystem merging, speaking engagements. Um, and one of those was with Tony Robbins. And obviously that an ecosystem merger like that creates access to extraordinary numbers of humans, um, you know, beautifully. But I'm, I'm curious, my brother, um, anything in your brilliance and your wisdom that your is present for you that you like to share about these levers and what we're talking about? It's hard to expand on everything being said. I will state this. It's been an amazing day. And uh, uh, this definitely, you know, I always have epiphanies about a lot of things when you speak, um, especially at events like this. So thanks for having this event. Um, if I went back through my, I don't even know how many pages of notes I have here, at least seven or eight pages of notes. I, I would just be reading off to everybody, everything that they've probably already had. So I'm not going to take, uh, take anybody's time commenting on everything that I've had to take away, uh, except um, it's utter genius uh, what you've done. And I think applying it to Platt is brilliant. Well, thank you. And, and for you, thank you. For Coming from just one of the most incredible speakers that there is as well. I mean, oh, Kyle. every time Kyle. Oh. Yeah. Mind boggling. Influence, mind boggling. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Kyle, um, the dynamic of your creating the partnership with Tony, not getting into all the details, but can you just express to folks maybe one, like that's a mess. That's like, you know, Rob Gill, Chris Crone, um, you know, type dynamic, right? Mm. And then maybe a simpler one or a, a more, medium size or lesser version just to let this pop from a different angle for people in you know just a couple of minutes would that be something you mind stepping into to give people the just at, we're trying to at, the outcome is from the you know this couple of minutes to actualize the reality of the power of ecosystem merging and what's present for people and how much different might this have been without the tony ecosystem merger and then maybe a, a little bit more of a less dynamic and massive one? Um, two things. Uh, I'm glad you differentiated the two. The ecosystem merger with Tony was a pretty long-term strategic uh, maneuver. And I can write a book on how that happened, probably worth, worth writing actually. Um, but I had to know a lot of things about Tony. I had to know a lot of the, the, the people he had touched and stories. And I knew companies that he had tried to do business with and these kind of things. And it was a sprinkling of about 20 pieces of information and connections I had to maneuver over several years to make that happen, to cause the shared experience um, that you're talking about here. So it's, it's, it's worthy to know because going for somebody who's that big, there's no reason why Tony should be doing business with me. And I even said that to him when he actually came out and met with me. He was all excited about doing business with OsteoStrong and I interrupted him. I said, what are you doing here? Like, why am I even on your radar? Mm. Um, because there's millions of tens of millions of people that want this opportunity. Why me? And, uh, and uh, what is your intention, sir? <laughs> right? um, as far as, uh, you know, lesser eco ecosystem, I'm going to say lesser, um, but uh, definitely less influential people than Tony. It, it really is quite simple. And I think one of the things that uh, really helps you in this regard is mastering and understanding your heroic, unique identity and how and when to communicate that to somebody uh, in a way of service. It's not, and one of the things I'll be honest, I've really struggled with and really even hit me differently today is, uh, and you call it false humility for those of you who don't understand what that means, and that is something I've suffered from from a long time, but not 
really realizing that it was a fear of judgment. Um, it was a fear, a fear of being seen as being influence driven. Uh, I'm sorry, um, not influence driven, certain uh, 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 significance driven. And, um, and then in, of, in and of that self is kind of being significance driven. Uh, in sort of a, uh, a roundabout way, but if you meditate on that, you kind of see that that's the case. I had not ever thought of that before, so thank you, Adam, for revealing yet another area of my life I need to work on. Um, but um, the I think that um, when you understand your your heroic, unique identity, um, that really makes it possible for those types of things to happen with anybody. Even with in speaking with you, Sean, the. The day we met, we met on a gondola in the Whistler at the at a financial um, plat financial trip, and uh, that re our relationship has grown, and we've had a chance. We've had many shared experiences uh, to where we get to know each other, and um, and they're not that hard to do. I think that the um, the the one of the challenges, as you stated, many people. I had this with plats too. Is there are just so many people from so many different walks of life and then understanding who your ideal avatar um, and what it is that you're after is so key because it's kind of like the analogy you gave not that plats are quarters on the street in 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 new york but it to your point it is you you can you could spend your time with a lot of people that really don't have an ecosystem that you want to merge with and, it, and nothing wrong with that. Again, no judgment of that. There's all types of opportunities to create friendships and have social experiences. But if you're really motivated by having impact as so many of the plats are, it's, you know, you really have to understand who is my ideal avatar, then how do I serve this community within the universe of my you know, her heroic unique identity. I keep saying that out as opposed to the anacronym because I know that many people may not fully have resonated with them yet. And so I think that understanding who you are in the, and, how, and how you can serve and when to communicate that is absolutely huge. Awesome. Well, thank you, brother. Um, the final final is, Kyle, um, your having created ecosystem merger with Tony Robbins, your heart centeredness and brilliance and wisdom are like, are fully, fully present. And let us all be inspired by the fact that this man created that relationship and then actualized it into more than 160 franchises impacting the health of people in unbelievable, extraordinary, and mind-blowing ways, including my mother, who uh, goes to your beautiful and wonderful facility um, in um, the great state of New Jersey, uh, in, I think it's uh, Norwood, and for fun energy, Hector, who's become a part of Unblinded Elite recently, who's just a rock star, works with all kinds of crazy people. He was like, oh yeah, Kyle, and, you know, I said, he, Kyle's an awesome guy who's in the, the group with you. And he was saying that he's looking, he's doing some work, looking to create a merger with an Osteo Strong franchise down in Florida to do some work with. I'm like, do you know Kyle is like the founder of Osteo? He's like, hey, what? Hmm. He's, like, he's the founder of Osteo Strong? So uh, that was a fun fact from, I think, Friday, the conversation. Another one. Yeah. When, uh, how about Kyle, when you came on the video to shoot with Minal, uh, who was injured um, at one of the events, but began to share how uh, Osteo Strong um, has been helping her uh, along the way, like the, from the event her, itself yeah. that she went to. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, one after another. Yeah, all sorts of uh, serendipitous dynamics, though, but nothing, none of that occurs without people, ecosystem merging, running shared experience, ecosystem merging, speaking. Kyle, uh, again, it's an honor. Uh, I believe our work uh, together has only just begun. And I'm Absolutely. That's so grateful for you. Absolutely. Grateful for you too. Thank you, brother. Yep. Um, so, B Rips, uh, King Peter. Yeah, hey, Sean. Peter, how are you? Amazing. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing amazingly. Um, Peter, you have um, one business mastery three, three times. Um, you are one of the smartest human beings that uh, I've ever met. Um, and I am curious. What is present for you as we run through these seven levers? And by the way, 
one of those business mastery wins, I thank you, was in support of the American Foundation for the Blind. That caused uh, more than $2 million to be raised at the end of the day. And that was fun, magical, completely crazy. And it was uh, created a beautiful HUI soundbite for me, which was Tony Robbins um, introducing me as his dear friend, Sean Callagy. So that was very fun at the end of that business mastery. So I thank you on a contribution level, on an HUI level, on a growth level, um, on a connection love level. Thank you, Peter. What's present? Oh, well, first of all, my pleasure. Second of all, thank you for doing this. And third of all, um, I'm working with Gretchen, one of the unblinded elites, to see if we can make that a fourth win, a fourth set of contribution, a fourth set of HUI, um, and see if we can finish off the Gordon Gun pledge. Um, so before Business Mastery, we should talk about that quickly. <laughs> um, I, but, yes, I, I would love to. Uh, aside from that, I think the, the biggest, again, I've got pages of notes as well. Oh, from and, and, oh and by the way, Peter had the shared experience. And listen, I'm all the greatest advocate for New Jersey. I'm all the greatest advocate for the New Jersey beaches, rivaling any beaches in America. Dr. Beach at Florida International University even says the New Jersey beaches on Long Beach Island, this is a real person, Dr. Beach, Florida International University, fact check me, that the Long Beach Island swimming beach that's right there in front of our home is the second best swimming beach in America. But there might be a small issue that sometimes there's these green flies that bite you and your legs swell up if you're like allergic to them like Peter's. Oh, I didn't say that. So longer story for there. But Peter, how are you feeling? Um, and thank you for like all the time, energy, things that we did in the house, hanging out all the Chegg nights. He like lived with Adam Gugino, um, in fun energy. So, uh, didn't love the green bugs, but I think still loved the Jersey shore. Uh, the green bugs are not always there. They're just only there on occasional days, the wind blowing the wrong way, but Peter, what say you? Yeah, that three months was magical. And we created some amazing stuff together. And as you said, living with Adam and Fernando and with everybody on that team was just phenomenal. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing from today was around Mavis connectors and salespeople at the Real Raw and the formula of how to put those together. Because um, I haven't heard you give that that treatment before. Um, and it became really, really crystal clear. But as you said, like you you could go, you can get great at hello to yes one on one, but until you can scale it, your your pathway is is pretty fixed. Um you, know, you can be phenomenal at it but you still have eight hours in a day um, it, or 12 or 16 if it's um, LBI with Adam, but you still already got a certain amount of hours in the day. Whereas when you uh, unlock that ecosystem of speaking engagement, sales meeting, sale par you know, paradigm, then suddenly you can scale and suddenly your, your biggest problem is how do I cope with this business, which is a much better class of problem to have than I don't have enough business. Absolutely. And we're going to move into um, levers, uh, foundational principles, excuse me, eight and nine, um, getting ready for our grand finale at, at 10. Um, so Peter, with um, I, I th you're working in the space of, um, I, I want to say correctly, uh, investment, financial abundance, some of the unique uh, currencies and other dynamics, how would, how would you best share the adventures that you are up to at this point. I want to not misstate that. Yeah, thank you. We're working, I'm working, and again, it's ecosystem mergers. It's Roberto Ponce that I met, who's one of like the crypto kings of Latin America. Uh, Brian Michaud, uh, I'm blinded elite, and um, Platt in the world of crypto mining. So we're helping, we're putting together private equity funds in the world of crypto investments and crypto mining because there's a lot of people rushing into crypto and maybe need some, some help and guidance on how to do that in a more sustainable, less volatile way. Yeah. And, and, some, and, and just watch like ecosystem merging dynamics. The folks that would be looking to do that would be some people typically with you know, some level of resources or, and some of the optimal you know, folks that you'd be looking to talk to people with resources and that fits squarely within folks that obviously we want to meet others in the ecosystem want to meet. So let's, you know, be mindful of co-creating magical shared experiences to meet and speak and communicate with these people. hundred percent. And for everyone here, when you talk about doing it with integrity, you know, I'm a, I'm an unblinded elite. Um, I have access to all the unblinded chat channels. I have access to all the unblinded Facebook groups. Um, and John, until you and I and Adam, you know, talk, I haven't approached that avenue. 
Um, yeah, the, and I would just stress that to everybody. It, it's so easy to put links in chats. I know Marge did one, but that was by accident. Marge, I'm not talking about you, but it's so easy to see a chat and go, oh, here's a link, here's a link, here's do this, do this. Um, and it's a shortcut. You know, I, I've worked with you for three Thanksgiving, Sean's what, November 19 was the first Thanksgiving we chat we were on. So as soon as we came up with this, you know, we started, we said, right, let's do new Money Mondays. And we set up a webinar for every other Monday. I modeled you, I modeled Tony. So we've got 200 people coming on a speaking engagement every other week. Awesome. Um, and that's, you know, there's just self-generated, but it comes from the ecosystem preeminence, let's be honest, from winning Business Mastery, yeah. which comes from the work we did, which comes from me helping Beck and Siri, which comes from the second Business Mastery. And, you know, all these things come from just service and giving. And as long as it's non-transactional, it returns tenfold over. Awesome. And, and for you, Peter, for 2022, like flag in the ground, if you think of the seven levers, and we're about to talk about closing leakage and some dynamics like moving in, what would you say? I'll go first. The number one thing I am tightening is the intentionality of the optimal ecosystem, um, mavens, connectors, and salespeople's on real raws and tightening the speaking platforms that I'm on in 2022. So, so for you, what's, what are the leakages that you're tightening the most? Because this is a new venture, there's not necessarily leakages just yet as, a, as such, but I started by pedaling uphill like one-on-one, -on -one, you know, selling the opportunities we had and we did we've done well we did four or five million dollars in the last 45 days so not bad in quotes I'm like wow this is still a long road if i do this myself so i'm like hang on a second disrupting fundraising well if we're going to pay people a finder's fee for bringing money into a, an investment fund actually wouldn't that give them more return than if they just went and fundraised so couldn't we work with private schools couldn't we work with the afb couldn't we work with and couldn't we rebadge our series of investment as a fund a three million dollar fund for that charity um in that case now i've got ecosystem mergers now i've got ecosystem mergers now speaking engagements make sense now real rules make sense so i actually reversed it because if you remember when we met i was doing i'm sure you do remember i was doing digital marketing and i was doing it one-on-one -on -one, and it took me a long time to come up with a scalable model so maybe that is there for people that at some point you do actually have to look at the model you have and say, okay, well, if I was to approach this from the left, not the right, do I have a model that becomes a scalable model? And I, I would say it's always there. You just need to look hard enough. Peter, a 4P would mean um, that you are now in the rarefied territory of Joe Montana and Terry Bradshaw heading towards uh, the, the uh, illustrious Tom Brady. So, brother, I, I wish you all the best. I look forward to that conversation. Um, and any well, strictly this win will be Gretchen's, not mine. I, I'm I'm there to support and love, but yeah, I'll still I'll still say it out loud. <laughs> Gretchen is a straight up rock star, and I do believe that the last business mastery winner also was a former lucky gorilla. Um, That's right. That was true. Yep, yeah, Tui was a lucky gorilla. Uh, this time round, maybe it's the uh, resilient gorillas or some other such, but. Um, we're back. Awesome. All right. Peter Swain, happy Soulful Sunday. Hope. Uh, thank you so you much. And well. thank you again for putting this together. Comments in the chat. Myself, everyone, this is this just such value. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Um, let's go. Is B Rips here for a moment? B Rips? Nicole? Okay. B Rips, we're going to come back. So we are going to proceed. Tank, let's hit foundational principle. Number eight. And Tink, we'd love to hear. Yeah, okay. So it's just not happening. At some point, there's a formula. So what I am going to ask Adam DeGino is for you to begin this beautiful conversation for five minutes, that there is a formula. Five minutes. We're going to rapid treatment. It's just not working where we hunt in process, influence, self-master, like the foundational dynamics of it, which is where we look for why something's not happening. The seven levers of marketing and sales process master that we just covered it 
foundation principle six, and you own it all at lever seven, you, you own the business. If you create the business lever eight, eight, now foundation principle eight is like, there's a formula to all of this influence process, self-mastery. And so for all of us, when there's leakage in our money, time, and magic, mm -hmm. we look to these places. So just the dynamic of these things and how you're awakening to this after building a $750 million company, what if we're a president for you? Mm -hmm. And I will return in a moment. Okay, thank you. Adi Vigino, ladies and gentlemen. Sure. Here, okay. So yeah, I mean, how, how I got here was that pr this principle, um, I had, you know, built an organization from zero employees, eight in a warehouse to 500. And as Sean has mentioned multiple times, three and a half million to $750 million. And um, it was a solar company. So, you know, when you are in a industry or a vertical um, for multiple years and you've had great success, you begin to believe the story that it is the vertical or the business that you're in that you understand and the reason why you've been successful. And if you were to go on to another career or if you were to walk away from uh, that industry that you might not be successful in another industry. And that may be the case if, you're, if you don't understand that there is a formula uh, that is controlling your money, your time, your magic, no matter what industry or business that you are in. And when I sat for the first time and heard Sean unpack influence process self, as I mentioned earlier today, the influence portion was what resonated. That's what connected to my soul. Um, that's what allowed me to realize that there was something bigger than anything I've ever come across. And the next piece that truly gave me the certainty and the confidence that I had found something that was going to not only connect to my heart, but also allow me to create the impact and the abundance that I knew um, I was meant for um, across the board was this formula, because I now was able to apply everything that he was sharing in that one meeting to everything that I had built and scaled. So I'm sitting there in that moment for the first time thinking, wait a minute, I'm doing wonderful, incredible things for the employees um, of the company that I work for. Uh, I'm doing, you know, great things for the people uh, that are wanting to save money on their electric bills. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a great, you know, company um, for the most part. Uh, and, but yet I knew I wanted more. And now I had found the formula or the science of how I was able to build, scale and grow everything that I had done. So I knew I was an extremely hard worker. Great. I knew that, um, you know, I had sales skills. Amazing. And I also knew that the process to which we were able to get into somebody's home or get to somebody's shared experience, I didn't have language for. So in that four hour dinner, Sean gave me language for everything that I had created for the last four years, not only the last four years, but everything that I had created, everything that I had been successful in. Uh, in my life around business. So now I had a formula and well, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to apply it, not just to solar, but to any industry and business that I could, you know, get my hands on. Um, and that didn't happen overnight, of course, over the next, you know, uh, year, a couple of years. Um, and I will, I'll say the same goes for Fernando and this, you know, everything that I'm sharing with you right now could just literally be um, paralleled in what, Fernando and myself have experienced together in this process. Um, but the, the beginning of speaking to people from all different walks of life, all different verticals, truly begin to apply this formula. So the one word that I will say first and foremost uh, is assessment. It allowed myself and the business owner or partner that I've been speaking to to assess um, their outcomes, um, for starting with their vision and, uh, as well, you know, uh, looking at the outcomes that they look to achieve and then come and break it down to process. One of the things over the last year, I think Sean said one statement changed everything for me, uh, was your process should not dictate your outcome and your outcome should not dictate your vision. 
it should be vice versa. That was the beginning of self mastery, which was creating your why, uh, you know, um, your understanding your identity, creating your vision, all of which, you know, I saw in the space of Tony Robbins in that business mastery that I had went to uh, just seeing so much depth in, you know, your ability to get into state and take what was called zone action. So once I began to put things into containers, once I saw that this formula allowed me to take any, really any circumstance, but any circumstance in business and put it into either someone's influence mastery or someone's process or where most of it was rooted in was, uh, you know, self mastery. It allowed me to first again, assess and then apply this, um, this formula to it. And when I started speaking to tens and hundreds and even thousands of licensed professionals, entrepreneurs from all walks of life, extremely successful eight figure earners, even nine figure earners all the way down to people, you know, making 20, $30,000 a year. It didn't matter everything that we were talking about today, it fell into one of these categories. Um, I'm yet, if you can find another category that something will not fall and it is going to either be something in your self mastery. What is your self mastery is defined by um, what we're talking about today. It is your ability to get into zone action. Your zone action is the most efficient action step, efficient with your money, your time, your energy that you should be taking in that moment to hit your outcomes, which are of course aligned with your vision and aligned with your identity. And what stops you from doing that is you either fear of failure, fear of rejection. That just absolutely resonated. And then of course, all the, you know, the components of that, um, which even, you know, we've started to talk even a lot more about around health today, but physiology, you know, your limiting beliefs, all of those things that are tied together. Um, so much of the unbelievable uh, success that I've had has fallen into those categories and, and understanding myself date with destiny. I mean, has literally propelled me to the next level. My certainty right now, um, so much of it is coming from that experience. And that alone wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, create the money, time, and magic that I'm looking for. Um, what uh, I'm, I'm sharing now is the combination of all three. The process mastery, which we spoke of, you know, this, the last few sections. And then, of course, you know, combining that with your ability to go from hello to yes or influence or what it's all rooted in. Really, at the end of the day, uh, we speak about influence being the superpower, um, but what do you do with it? So the understanding that there is a formula that one way or another, there's something controlling your money, your time, your magic. And once you have become unblinded to that, once you become aware of those things, uh, you begin to see not just linear results we talked about, but exponential. Um, the more or the higher level of mastery and understanding that you have of these principles, uh, the micro, the more micro distinctions that you discover create massive um, exponential results. The higher you get in your level of mastery, the more that you return. So one of the, um, one of the, one of the other uh, principles that I've found in people and Fernando, once again, I'm sure would, if he's in the chat right now, will agree the people that come with the more of an open growth mindset, which I'm sure most of you are here today that are on, on this uh, call in plat to begin with and being a part of the community. But the people that have that growth mindset, uh, high level of mastery, uh, a lower level of significance, and uh, um, even you know, just the desire to, to want more and be open to more, uh, are the ones that when discovering this, this formula and what we talked about today, get instant results and, and really exponential. Um, it is the understanding that it's one of those three categories that is stopping you 
from your next level. Just think about it. Is it something that is preventing you from a self-mastery perspective for not why you're not picking up the phone and doing the things, calling the people that you know you should be reaching out to? Is it the process in which you're not understanding who you should be reaching out to? Have you not modeled or thought about who those people are? Is it you're not measuring uh, the results in which you are uh, calling people or reaching out to people? The numbers, measuring those numbers, maximizing those numbers. Is it the time blocking um, that you're not setting aside the time to do the things? And if all those things are happening and you're speaking to the people you want to speak to and you're getting in front of the people you want to get in front of and they're not saying yes, then have you looked at your influence? Um, so it's one of those three categories that you're going to find yourself finding leakage and finding the areas of growth to bring yourself to the next level. Adam Gugino, I've been listening in, brother. Have awesome you really? Or are you just saying? No, I'm just no, no, no. I, I, okay. I didn't hear every, I heard most of it. Uh, just taking a, a quick moment. Um, Thank you. But yeah, you did an absolutely awesome job. So to summarize this point, that there is a mechanism, a formula to find the leakage in every area, right? Our self-process and influence mastery tells us what we're missing, either what we're doing, how we're getting ourselves to do it, and then our influence ability. Thanks, brother. You're doing a great job today. Thank you. For yes, thank you. So in our um, self-process and influence mastery overall. So amazing job. So let's go to found. And so that's where, like, if we don't have any outcome, we just go. Is it process mastery, influence mastery, self-mastery? <clears throat> and then our marketing and sales process mastery run through the seven levers. So this is a diagnostic tool to find the leakage. So awesome job. Yes. Foundational principle number nine. You guys are doing amazing. Whoa. Diagnostic tool. Write Great that job. down. Diagnostic, Diagnostic tool. tool. Diagnostic tool. So foundational principle number nine, take. Plat proximity, right? Not random networking, not random mastermind. And by the way, I'm not, because you may go, I run a mastermind, do you chill? Okay, all good. What we're talking about is not randomness, intentionality. And the key word for this foundational principle number nine is accountability, discipline. My personal words for this year are love, courage, discipline. Love, courage, discipline equals magic. Love, you can't have courage. You can't have love without courage. You can't have courage um, without discipline, discipline without courage. You can't have love without discipline because so often we mistake and we, we kid ourselves going back to this like, real exploration of integrity. And we think when we have undisciplined, loose relationships that, and we'll say undisciplined, we mean, we don't mean like punishing. We mean like Siri is disciplined. Beck is disciplined, like doing the things you commit to do. If you've ever heard, Siri doesn't tell the expanded story, by the way, very often at this point, uh, the way she told it when I first heard it in 2018, it was the most profoundly insane story of training I've ever heard other than David Goggins. So put David Goggins aside. What I heard uh, Siri do, it was so mind-blowing. I could not imagine it. Like, like Siri, David Goggins, most crazy, insane people in the entire history of the world when I heard the expanded story, that requires discipline. So, and, and who's more heart-centered than Siri Lindley? So when you think discipline, we often think, oh, that's not loving. No, loving, courage, discipline equals magic. So the point here at number nine, the real takeaway here is just taking all we talked about today, it doesn't exist if we don't have accountability. We don't have discipline, right? <clears throat> and we have heart and love and we have math and we have heart and love and we have math. And what is the math about? The math is about the things we talked about measuring today. And then creating innovations off of that, but nothing can happen if we don't have math to go at heart, no discipline, no accountability equals massive leakage, flush it down the toilet, nothing transpires. And always being fully transparent, we've had beautiful acceleration in the work we're doing in all these different ways. But the, the meeting we had yesterday with Rob and Chris was closing down leakage and holding accountability, managing things more optimally. Same thing we talked about with Unblinded. <clears throat> where have we allowed, where have we mistaken being loving and heart-centered 
for actually being um, significance driven of not wanting people to get pissed off or mad at us. And that's present for all of us. So we're often not holding accountability or discipline structures as a parent, as an athletic coach, as a business owner, driver, because we're trying to please people. And we're not helping anybody. Not, we're not helping the other person ourselves if not accountable and disciplined. And the number one, well, the kids are number one, a huge place that we see this showing up is in the ecosystem mergers between and amongst people. So people agree we're going to do this by this date, doesn't happen. 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 And then it collapses. And at the end of the day, right, somebody could say that the ecosystem, whether it be Platt or another ecosystem you're involved in, that doesn't really work for me. It didn't work for me. What didn't work is these foundational principles were missing. And if these foundational principles overall are missing, right, which, are, which all go underneath, this is, the, this is, it's our money time magic is controlled by our self process influence mastery, right? And then these foundational principles inform underneath self process and influence mastery, the way that we spent the day together. Now, um, do we have Manal Taruna floating? Manal is, is out there, right? Manal is out there? Manal Tink, do we have Manal? If we do, just give us a yes. So, we sure do. all right, let's bring Manal up. We're going to have to go uh, headphones for a moment here. Uh, yes. What's it? Do we have Manal? Hello, Sean. Hello, how are you? Good, fantastic. How about you? We're doing um, fantastic as well. So, Manal is a straight up rock star. Her and her amazing sister, Taruna. Um, have a strategy, accounting, high level tax dynamics and making your business more money, helping your business keep more money with super high level strategy and effectiveness. Is that a fair uh, global presentation of your identity, Manal, in your business? Yes, indeed. Awesome. And Manal also um, was someone who was not born in this country and in her beautiful country of origin, some dynamics, you know, in, in family said, hey, we don't invest resources and money in educating our daughters. So uh, yeah, let's, you know, you're going to university is not an effective uh, investment. Went anyway, unbelievable human being, just spoke to uh, a panel before a massive uh, accounting group organized by Intuitive, I think it was thousands of accounts and all. Yes, it was about 5,000 accountants. 5,000, yep. not just 1,000, nope. not just 2,000, 5,000. Absolutely extraordinary. And so um, we're talking- and, about and, a, and a 40 under 40 award too. And a 40 one. under 40 award on top of it. So Manal is a straight up rock star in all that she overcame to get even into the space of accounting, let alone all of these achievements. So Manal, thank you so much for being here today with us. Well, thank you, Sean, for having me here. And I'm so privileged and feel so grateful to share this platform with you and all the good shares and learning from the previous speakers. Awesome. And then all, thank you for you and on their behalf as well, thank you. So we're in the conversation about discipline, uh, accountability, heart-centered math, discipline, accountability to make this all work and stick obviously you are a person who's had to be very disciplined, very accountable to create all that you've created in your life on that topic. And just the overall day, what share, what would you like to share with the group? Well, I have always seen those challenges that I had in my life while growing up, all their boundaries, limitations that were put up by the society as the opportunity to grow. Uh, I mean, I didn't have that right meaning and what the growth will look like back then. And honestly, I mean, I had never imagined that I could have such a wonderful 100% in cloud sitting business in the US being just migrated in this country barely 14 years and make such a huge contribution. I mean, I had never dreamed about it. I know so many people dream, but this was never a dream when I was growing up. Growing up, 
um, when my father said, I can't even do an internship when you're studying for your CPA, which, is, which wasn't even allowed in our family. So I feel really privileged. Um, my one goal have been in life is I don't want to be at the end stage of my life and reflecting back and feel guilty and which is what have got me doing whatever I'm doing so far in life. I don't want to be at my deathbed and feel guilty that I could have, I should have done more or given more. I just want to impact as many lives as I can with our services, uh, you know, with connections, um, helping each other um, and you know, help humans create more time and more magic, the way you say in your language, more money, time and magic. And that's what most business owners get in the business for, for more money, more time and more magic. And I feel privileged that we could be that helper for the business owners. Awesome. And obviously so much more to co-create for you, biggest uh, takeaways, if any, from today. So if you were summarizing like the impact, what's foundational here for you, what would that be? So I have got 23 pages of notes from today. <laughs> the high number, 23 pages. 23. 23 pages of notes. Oh my God. With, um, uh, you know, usually in the past when I used to go to most of the events, I used to go away with my action item. Um, I used to have the level of impact it will make and the ease of implementation and the higher the score, I will implement those items first. What I was missing, I was not putting the time, you know, by what time I will do those, even though the score would be higher um, without the time, it doesn't go anywhere. So I really liked what Chris, um, Chris Crown mentioned that earlier this morning. 40 items to do within 30 days. I mean, it was a real good takeaway. Um, from Rob Gill, those 40 second videos. Um, I really love that. I even went on YouTube and checked it out. From Siri Lindley, uh, you know, the impact that she's making, um, stopping the horse slaughtering, that was also amazing, you know, takeaway. Um, we don't have to be a huge personality to achieve high goals. You know, all of them have started somewhere and I could be that normal person too and start somewhere and learn from so many, uh, you know, beautiful people. Um, Marja, she mentioned, you know, some of the great stuff about her writing and so many good things. Uh, Patricia, you know, her, uh, you know, she shared so many good wisdoms. So I have a whole bunch of notes from you, Adam, and all the other speakers, Joan, uh, you know, primary question, so many of them. Awesome. No, Manal. And uh, let me share this, that you are an inspiration. And we, as we've talked about, are um, in search of the same uh, avatars. Business owners, entrepreneurs, attorneys, accountants, financial service providers that are making things happen, that are building things. So there's, there's much more to do in the dynamic of shared experience, speaking platforms, et cetera. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to continuing those conversations. And I will absolutely share with you that you are inspiration to me, your inspiration to many as somebody I cannot even fathom. Like, could you imagine coming to, some people are like, well, you're not, you, you can't see. I'm like, okay, thank you. Uh, well, I'm inspired by somebody who didn't speak the language, who came to this nation and built a successful company building, growing, expanding, speaking in front of 5,000 accountants. It's absolutely extraordinary. So I'm all, um, congratulations on your success. Uh, thank you for being the inspiration you are and for rocking it out and being here with 23 pages of notes today. So I'm all, congratulations and thank you. Coming from you, Sean, that really means a lot. That really means a lot. And as uh, Patricia was saying, accepted. I mean, that was a huge access point for me as well. I mean, I'm highly critical of myself. And, but when I see what you are saying, I mean, it makes a huge difference in accepting it the way I am. In fact, I did my whole education in, in my mother language. Mm -hmm. English was not as popular at back then where I grew up. So Starting my college in English and then studying for CPA and coming in the country was a huge, huge shift for me. 
Mm. And for years, I held myself back thinking, who would buy from an Indian accent, accented girl? Who would buy from her, or her? And if someone would, they would not pay her well. But I was so wrong. I was so wrong. And one last thing I want to add, and I want to thank you and the whole team behind that you guys all have done tremendous job. You have no idea. It's Sunday and you have had more than 100, 100 viewers throughout the whole day, which is a huge thing. On Sunday, most people want to spend time with the family and a whole lot of other things. But the massive value you and the whole team is bringing and the backstage crew is tremendous. Well, thank you. Thank you. That it's is tremendous. Received with massive appreciation. And Manal, thank you for everything that you do and thank everybody here. And we're going to take it home now with uh, foundational principle, final principle number 10, right after recapping this one. So Manal, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Manal. So take away from this is that discipline and accountability, heart and math matter, discipline and accountability around heart and math. What does that mean? Like just this micro distinction as the final key takeaway in foundational principle number nine is don't manage the outcome. Don't manage the revenue. Don't manage how many people showed up. Manage the behaviors along the way. Where was the leakage in the management, the accountability, the discipline? Where was the leakage in the management, accountability, and discipline in the pieces along the way, not the outcome? It's like, hey, why didn't we have more revenue? Hey, why didn't we have greater attendance? Along the way, look at the spots where that was being caused. That's the key dynamic to make this discipline truly, accountability truly, math truly work along with our beautiful heart-centeredness. So final, final is putting us all together, the full, beautiful, insane, immense, awesome integration is this is all about paying for plat for life. How we pay for plat for life, this incredible, powerful ecosystem and what we can co-create together, the value. Just think of what occurred for Siri in just an hour and a half or so. And that's just a microcosm of what all of us can do and create together. Think of this piece, what would Tony Robbins do? The foundation principle number one is modeling Tony. The introductory concepts overall was that all, that everything is about our rising and our money, our time, our magic. What are your priorities? Money, time, and magic. And where is your process, influence, and self mastery that are causing your money, time, and magic? The foundational concept of the hardest thing to do in business is assemble an audience of your ideal avatar is rooted in the question of, okay, well, how do I create the most efficient money, time, and energy, money, time, and energy, investment, money, time, energy, shared experience to make it all glow, all go, all like fire forward and integrity to rise our money, time, and magic. Integrity meaning I'm going to add more value than I'm taking in money, time, and energy. Then that rolls into modeling Tony, because that's what Tony does. It's how he's lived. It's how he's built this massive, unbelievable amount of influence, 100 companies, net worth approaching a billion dollars. All of those dynamics come flowing out of this. And we move into what does it look like in the superpower of our influence and how we take that superpower of influence. I see you. I hear you. What you say matters to me and how we connect that to the seven levers to make them actualize and work. Shared experiences, what is your shared experience? What commitment are you making to your shared experience coming out of today? It's the beginning of 2022. What is it you're committing to? Ah, oh, I could do something once a week. Once a week, come on now, massive acceleration. What about once a day? Creating the right partnerships. Maybe it's once a week for a month. Maybe it's twice a week then for the next month. I'm sorry, maybe it's once a week, then maybe it's twice a month. Whatever it is for you, how does that increase to the maximum effort impact that you need to create, or not need, you're committed to, that's flowing to you for the money time magic of flowing to you, creating. Then in those seven levers, right, after your ecosystem mergers you're speaking, are you counting your sales meetings? You're counting your sales. And how is that impacting your disposable income? Because all the leakage you need to be finding 
after we look globally at our process influence self mastery we find inside of those beautiful seven levers we never lose our heart we never lose our heart ever but it doesn't mean that we're in our heart coach herb brooks the movie miracle the greatest upset of all time tony robbins and his leadership from all the greatest leaders abraham lincoln these folks oprah winfrey manage people they have heart they contribute hugely siri lindley coaching world champions think beck and siri are not disciplined accountable massively in their courage when they caused world champions not just themselves when they caused others to create that so let us not confuse love and heart centeredness from the person that we're modeling at the top of the whole thing tony robbins let us not be confused that discipline and accountability are absent because without them nothing happens nothing occurs so it has been an honor and a privilege to be here i i thank every one of you from manal to marja to patricia to joan greco back siri my god these amazing extraordinary human beings and rolling at the beginning, Chris Crone switching his flight, coming on, Rob Gill being here, Adam, everything you've done. Wow. Of course, our uh, Stephanie, uh, Tink, my God, um, and the amazing team at Epic, Eddie Gordon. Was that Tink? I said, Tink can't handle Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, Eddie Gardner, thank you. <laughs> Beyond, yes. So, Tink, you're amazing. We love you. Um, Stephanie, incredible job. And, and I want to uh, thank an unbelievably extraordinary uh, person. Um, not you, Rob Gill, uh, but you are absolutely extraordinary and love you for hosting, for us being at Epic um, in all the things, but also thank um, Mona, uh, Mona Salatan, um, Selena's mom, my daughter's mom. We're amazingly uh, co-parenting together. Uh, Mona is as extraordinary a mom as exists on the face of the earth could not be more grateful for every everything that she does with selena and also i met mona through this through platinum partnership so in the magic part and to have a, a daughter from this ecosystem this platinum partnership is such an unbelievable gift in my life i cannot possibly overstate it and and mona is a rock star herself and came into this ecosystem um, having a desire to have a child was one of Mona's top outcomes and a whole bunch of different beautiful outcomes. She's an amazing salesperson, top 15 salespeople uh, out of 20,000 in the world at Salesforce. Um, just a, a, a true uh, real estate investor, entrepreneur, all the things. And these are the kinds of amazing human beings that we can co-create business magic with, life magic with, all the different things overall. So I, I could not thank Mona enough for everything that she does and for um, Selena's happiness and joy and uh, the privilege of hugging um, my daughter in a little bit um, and heading off to Jackson Hole, Wyoming with my older three children on Tuesday to go skiing. They got 10 feet of snow. I share that because at the end of the day, all we have is magic, but we can limit and inhibit and create so much more stress when we're not present through the beautiful intentionality of building our business. Now, the only reason we want it all is because of magic, but the money and time component is so accessible for us. And who wants to leave this ecosystem? I don't, maybe you do, right? But I think if we realize what we can co-create here together, then we truly can be a plat for life. Truly, truly can have it pay for itself forever. And if you're not a plat, right? It's an amazing, incredible place. But just everything we've taught today and shared today can be recreated in any ecosystem that you're a part of, a professional, lawyers, accountants, financial, business entrepreneurs, some other personal development world, certainly the unblinded ecosystem, being part of these things for life. This is how you make that work. So Adam, I love you, brother. I couldn't be more grateful. None of this happens without you. Love all of you. And I mean that. We love you. Thank you appreciate you enormously. You've been extraordinary today. We look forward to seeing you at an event upcoming. If we could ever be of any service in any way, shape, or form, we're here and present. We'll always do the best we can to do that. We love you. We appreciate you. Happy Soulful Sunday. Happy 2022 from the entire Unblinded team. Uh, on behalf of all of them and this team at Epic and Proximity and Chris Crone and everyone, 
Love you guys. Have a beautiful, soulful Sunday. Thanks. Great job. <laughs>